Hello. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Tostawat Fuketisut. I will be the moderator for this uh, S Booster Asian Route 2022. I hope everyone can hear me sound and clear. Okay, so welcome again for S Booster Asian Route 2022 or the space based idea contest. So today we have like a, the final semi-final screening document from 11 semi-finalist team to give you the space-based idea, idea and look forward for the future investment and opportunity on the space startup. And of course today we gonna have the final evaluation that give you the uh, some kind of the uh, final list voting class for you through the final round Asia in December. So without the further ado, I would like to give you the some kind of the briefly program of today. So please go to the uh, sessions. So what do we have here on the sessions? Please go to the next. Okay, so today we're gonna give the uh, welcoming speech by the representative from Gisda and cabinet office. And then I'm gonna give you brief team and judges introduction. And then we're gonna have the Asian round pitch presentation. And then after that, we're gonna have the uh, final evaluation and the panel talk from the special panelists, both from Gisda, BOI, and also the uh, uh, Japan winners from the last year. And of course, after that, we're going to give you the final list announcements for the winner team that can go to the final round in Tokyo. Without further delay, I would like to invite first Dr. Damlongrit Niamuat, Deputy Executive Director of Geoinformatics and Space Technology Development of JISDA, to give the welcome remarks. Please welcome. Dear Mr. Dear Mr. Soichiro Sakaguchi, Director, Director General for International Cooperation, National Space Policy Secretary, Cabinet Office, Government of Japan, Representative of S Booster Sponsors, Kyosura Corporation, Sky Perfect, JSAT Corporation, Sony Group Corporation, Honda R&D, Mitsui, Risk Taker, JAXA, participants and all distinguished speakers and guests. It is my great pleasure to present here at this important S Booster 2022. My name is Damlong Rit Deputy Executive Director of JISTA Thailand. I would like to say congratulations to all the semi-finalists participating in Asia Round S Booster 2022. You have created the ideas utilizing space asset um, to solve the demanding problems or new business idea. More than 100 ideas apply from the Asia Oceania region. Only 11 teams were selected from Indonesia, Singapore, Australia, Indonesia, India, and Thailand. Um, we would like um, to encourage not only from Thailand, but also countries, Asian countries to develop space business. This is in line with our plan to promote the space economy in Thailand. I hope that S Booster Contest will contribute good experience for you. And I would like also to thank for making this year as booster program successful. I really hope that we could continue our cooperation next year with all of you. Thank you and wish uh, you the best and good luck to everyone. Thank you very much, Dr. Damongri for giving the speech. So next, I would like to invite representative from the cabinet office, Japan, 
Mr. Koichiro Sakahuchi, Director General for International Cooperation National Space Policy Secretariat of Kadai Office, to give the welcome speech. Please welcome. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Damrongit Niyamaya, Deputy Executive Director of the Informatics and Space Technology Development Agency, JISTA, and distinguished participants. I am Shochiro Sakaguchi, Director General for International Cooperation of National Space Policy Secretariat of Cabinet Office. It is a great pleasure to meet you at the SBUSTA Asian Round today, and I would like to express my sincere appreciation to our indispensable international partner, JISDA, for the event together during this difficult time of COVID outbreak. Also, please let me express my appreciation to the sponsor of SBUSTA, Kyocera Corporation, Kaiperfect JSAT Corporation, Sony Group Corporation, Honda R&D Company Limited, Mitsui Company Limited, Disc Taker Incorporate, and also thanks to the judge for strong support to this event, Professor Ryosuke Shibasaki, University of Tokyo, Dr. Tamurongito Niyamar, Deputy Executive Director of OJISTA, Mr. Hidetaka Aoki, Space Business Evangelist, Mrs. Laura Anderson, Chairman of One Venture Global, Mr. Paradarajan Krish, Managing Director of IRA Consulting Private Limited, Mr. Women Tu, Head of Investment Technology, Media and Telecom Sector, Leonie Hill Capital. I would like to express my congratulations to all the semi-finalists for the winning in the first round of SBUSA 2022 Asia Round and being here today to present your innovative business idea. This is the third time for the SBUSA Asia Round to be organized. Through this SBUSA promotional activities, I myself also have had the opportunities to meet the past SBUSA semi-finalists and finalists, and I have learned that those with special based business idea discovered in SBUSTAS are starting to make their own progress in their respective countries. I hope SBUSTA is further facilitating the space innovation activities for those to save their chances. Finally, distinguished semi-finalists here today, space can make various fields of new business and all of you have great potential to be innovators. I would like to encourage you to keep exploring the opportunities and boosting your innovative business ideas. I wish all the best. Thank you very much. Thank you again, Mr. Koichiro, for your wonderful welcoming remarks. So next, I would like to give you more details of how many teams and what kind of the ideas we're going to present today. So let's see briefly for this uh, slide. As you can see, we have the 11 teams we give the present today. We have DeFi from Thailand. We have Lead Carbon from Thailand. We have Automate Satellite Tech Testability Assessment System from Philippines. We have indicated groundwater detection, tracking, prediction, forecast, estimation, and limitation by novel non-invasive techniques for indication management from India. We have Okami, an indicated approach-based early warning of outburst for and geological disaster from India. And we have Project Ikaras from Australia. We have Galashaya, five water near you from India. We have NERFS or navigation of early rescue flood system for network transportation from Malaysia. We have galactic junk management from Singapore. And we have intelligent Wi Fi preventive system from Malaysia. And lastly, we're going to have the ocean eyes from Indonesia to give you the uh, presentation today. After that, there will be the 30 minutes gap for the judges to give the uh, final evaluation in the parallelly 
we gonna have some kind of the uh, panel talk for the representative of ISDA Thailand Board of Investment and also the winner from X Booster last year to give you the opportunity of the space startup. Okay. Okay, let's move to the next uh, judges and sponsor. What do we have here for today? We have like uh, six total judges and also six total sponsor who gonna give you the uh, scoring based on the criteria. And that is very important to gain you to the final round. First, we have Professor Ryosuke Shibasuki from the Center for Spatial Information Science, the University of Tokyo. Okay, uh, yeah. welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So the second, we have Mr. Hidetaka Aoki. He is the uh, space business evangelist and co-founder of SpaceHorn. So welcome. Thank you. And the third, we have Ms. Lola Anderson. She is chairman from Global One Global Venture. Great, it's my honor to be with you today. Thank you. Thank you. And the fourth, we have Wala Dalajan Gritch. He is managing director of IRA Consulting PVT Limited. Hi, Wala. And the fifth, we have, ah, hi. Hi. We have Wee Ming Tu. She is the head of investment technology, media, and telecom sector of Leonai Q Capital. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. And lastly, of course, we have the Dr. Damrong Rit Nyamot, Deputy, Deputy, Deputy Executive Director of ISDA, who's going to give the uh, judges for today. So, for the sponsors, we have Kiosela Corporations, representative from Kiosela Corporations. We have representative from Sky Perfect, Desat Corporation. We have representative from Sony Group Corporation. We have representative from Honda R&D Company Limited. We have representative from Mitsui and Company Limited. And lastly, we have representative from Rick Taker Inc. Corporation. Okay. So next. As I mentioned for today, in the meantime, when jury is going to give the uh, final evaluation, we will have the uh, special panel talks based on the space economy and the opportunity for space startup in Thailand and global by Dr. Nathawat. He is director of space technology development of JISDA. And second, we have Ms. Locha Lachawong Bunbasert from Thailand Board of Investment. And we have Mr. Landon Camps from Lectrala. He is the S. Wooter 2021 winner that gained the prize of Asia Oceania Prize winner. Okay, so without further ado, I hope you are ready for the pine. Uh, semi-final list. So I'm gonna move to the first team. Team defiled by Mr. Titak Rangkasili. I hope you are ready. And once you share screen, I would ask you to see if you see the timer counting down. I would like to mention again, you're gonna have five minutes for pitch presentation exactly and then seven minutes for giving Q&A from the judges. So once you are ready, please share your screen, open your microphone, and check if you can see the starting clock timer. Okay, so I will leave the floor to you, please. Okay. Hello, everyone, can you uh, see my screen? <coughs> yes. Okay. okay, can I, I I can see your screen and you can see the voice. Can you see the timer? Uh I can't see the timer. Okay. Uh, uh the timer will instead your your uh monitor, right? I'm not sure. Right, right. Okay. 
is going to be oh. one of the pit profile. Sorry, timer is setting now. Wait a minute, please. Okay. All right. All right. <clears throat> yes, that's it. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we're still uh, waiting for the timer to come up. It'd be great if you can wait just a little more. Thank you. Okay, I can't see it. Come on now. Can you see the can you see the timer? Timer yeah, right now. Yes. Yeah. So not yet. I think team if I can start. Okay. So start now. Nah. Okay. So good afternoon everyone. I'm Gitat C or D Fire. So let's start from evolution. It is a problem that Asian people have faced for a decade. But what is the main cause of this problem? The main cause is crop burning. Crop burning contributes around 37% of PM to pipeline air pollution in Thailand and is also killed people around 7 million people each year. But more than PM2.5, it also contributing to the greenhouse gas and also loss of biodiversity. But why farmers have to do that? Each year, farmers get very low profit, low income, and crop burning is the cheapest way to clearing the land. And it is the cheapest way to killing the land. So if you want to solve this problem sustainably, we need some incentivized scheme to incentive them, encourage them to stop burning. And that's why U5 was born. DeFi is a common credit platform that is in the white farmer to stop burning using AI, IoT, and satellite data to detect the presence of fire. We aim to radio and one increase with this radio pollution, radio greenhouse gas, and increase farmer income. And what is a carbon credit? Carbon credit is a mechanism that allows the emitter buy the credit from the uh, mitigator, in this case, is farmers. And the market size of carbon credit is quite huge. Uh, in 2021, it's 851st billion USD and you grow 100x in the next 30 years. And how farmers get carbon credit from this platform? Farmers just register and stop burning, and then we will reverse the satellite data and sensor to uh, monitor that farmer will stop or not. If farmers stop, we will calculate the carbon credit based on the VRM methodologies, and then after we get paid, we reduct 20% as our operation fees and 80% we give to farmer as a carbon price. And moreover, we add a bit of ban that collect the agri waste to selling to the biomass energy to, to uh, increase the farmer income also. What farmer have to do with that is just a four easy step, register, redo, receive, and redeem. Register as register their land area that they have the eligible on that plan. And then it is a reduce we use the satellite data to monitoring, detection, and verification that farmer will stop or not. It is a real back end of our platform. It's a just two week of hotspot in Thailand. And we can classify which hotspot is from the agriculture, which hotspot is from the forest fire. And it is, uh, we can see the hotspot as a 3D and we can see the fire propagation. And after farmer register with us and uh, uh, stop burning, then they will get the carbon point equal to the uh, carbon credit that they will get. And then they will can redeem this coin as a cash or redeem as a fertilizer seeds or crop insurance. And it is overall of our operation. What farmer have to do is very easy, like appearing the Facebook, but the back end is not. We combine the satellite data, AI uh, drone and ground truth sensor to monitoring, report and verification as a carbon credit methodology. And what farmer will get from our platform is four main benefits, which is uh, income from carbon points, 
income from crop residual selling, income from the higher productivity because uh, the soil improved and uh, uh, reduced the hill risk. Each year, farmer will get more income from the, this platform and uh, our ecosystem around almost uh, 100x, 100% is another 3% that we add on each year to farmers. And for now, we already launched the pilot phase in a five province in Thailand with 500,000 farmers. And we get very good feedback. And next year, we use scale uh, our platform throughout the Thailand with uh, many uh, government sector in Thailand and also the international NGO also. And we are already confident uh, with uh, Kubota, which is the leading machinery companies that will do the project of zero bird project. And moreover, in the demand side, we already signed MOU with the one of the biggest uh, carbon uh, trading in the world South Pole to secure every carbon credit that we produce, we have the demand uh, already exists. And it's our milestone it is our first year that do a pilot project and next year we plan to scale throughout Thailand and the next uh, year we scale throughout the CLMV. And it's our social impact uh, in the five year accumulation, we uh, aim to uh, most uh, give the microfinance to almost 500,000 user and uh, distribute uh, revenue to farmers are more uh, 230 and reduce the greenhouse gas. And this is our team as expertise from rural development, social enterprise, uh, satellite engineer, and uh, uh, professor from the nature carbon capture. And finally, we hope that if you want to stop fire, you want to stop, stop your hunger. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. Now we move to the Q&A time for another seven minutes. So all the judge and sponsor, please feel free to ask. Hi, this is uh, Wee Meng. Now the, it's good to have uh, this concept uh, very, very impactful. My question is that uh, how would you then help the farmers to get rid of the uh, waste if it is not burned? Yeah, for now we collaborate with Kubota, the, the, the leading machinery to, and for now we also collaborate with the biomass uh, energy companies. We get rid of the, the agri waste and we do like, like a, a energy pellet and then we sell it to the biomass energy and also sell it to the biomass packaging also, yeah. Are uh, the logistics transportation of this being uh, sponsored by Kubota or uh, it is uh, it's going to be funded by the farmers themselves? Okay, it's uh, the, the price that, uh, oh, sorry, the revenue that farmer will get is cover all of logistics logistic costs. So let's say a farmer get 100%, the logistic cost around uh, 20 or 30 percent of their uh, revenue from the crop residual selling. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hello. Um, this is Aoki. I have one question uh, regarding uh, satellites. Um, what kind of uh, satellites are you expecting to use for your solution? Okay, I will let my CTO also answer his question. So, Kun Wasanchai, please. Okay, okay uh, I'm Wasanchai, CTO of DeFi. So, currently, uh, for satellite, we are using the, 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 the NASA firm's data. So, it's like the infrared data, uh, the hotspot data to, to monitor the fire. And on top of that, we, we are going to use the, the small uh, satellite constellations like Planet or in Japan, if it's applicable, it's like the, the the small satellite, the uh, medium resolution data to, to detect the burn sky and the phenology of the crop. So any satellite that is, is possible, but now we, we talk a bit with planet already. Okay, thanks. So optical uh, imaging uh, will be yes, just uh, it, fine it, for it, you. Yeah, I would say uh, infrared, optical and, and, and all, because for infrared we use for fire detection and for optical we use to check the burn sky and crop phenology. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Aurora? 
Yes, hello. Uh, once again, thank you so much for your presentation. Um, I think it was well, well organized and constructed. Um, my question relates to the global expansion of um, your value proposition. So, uh, Mike, could you go a little bit deeper and broader into the uh, cultural divide and the risk that you may see as you continue to expand throughout the region and globally? Thank you. Um, so it is our risk and uh, also barrier to entry. So for now, uh, for the okay, it, it, it is case of domestic first. So for now, we we are a local. Uh, we connect with local leader and government, and also uh, with the policy. So I think in, in terms of domestically, we are we are the first mover and the leader of this market. And in terms of the methodology, for now we are uh, in in process to develop the methodology with Vera in terms of crop burning. So if another competitor use this methodology, we will get some commission from this methodology also. So if the market is broad, we will grow it also. So it is our strategy. And also in, in terms of the uh, international expansion, for now we, we collaborate with the South Pole, the, the, the global leader one. So for, uh, it is one, one strategy that we jump to the, like the say Indonesia or the Vietnam also in the future. Yeah, so it is a quick uh, answer. So I, I'm not sure it's cover all that. Uh, yes, thank you so much. Thank you, Laura. So thank you for that question, um, Chai. I just wanted to ask a question about the business model. How we look good in the yeah, for now we have four revenue model. The first one is uh, the, the commission phase, 20% of our, our, our carbon credit selling. It is uh, the, the majority one of our uh, business model. The second one is we are the agriculture supply intermediary. We get some commission, 5% of commission from like, let's say, say companies or the license company that want to link with our farmers, that that farmer can use their, their the carbon credit to redeem the, the, the tools. And the third one is agri waste uh, management. We we selling the agri waste also we get some uh, operation fees. And the last one as all of the, the third one is uh, is annually. So we need some cash that will uh, will will use along the year. So we leverage our technology like fire technologies to to support the, the project like forest fire project. In, in Thailand, so yeah, either the, the main business model of, of our platform. Thank you. So uh, it would be good if you could actually put those numbers. Maybe uh, we can have a okay. separate call later. We have a huge potential in India for uh, yeah. your startup. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. I think we finished just in time. So thank you again for the team D5 for your wonderful presentation. So next, I would like to so move much. to the another Thai team. The team lead carbon. Of course. <laughs> the team lead carbon also come from Thailand. Uh, Hi. <clears throat> yeah, Dr. Majanka. Yeah, I'm here. Manjanata, okay. yes. Can you see me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you try to share the screen now? Okay, yes, I'm going. Okay, let's, I think let's reset the timer and we're gonna start once uh, the screen is ready. Uh, please okay. let me know. wait, wait, wait. So you can see my screen. Yes. All right. Um, if you're ready, please um, start it. Let me. Uh, let me please, please wait, wait me. Okay. I need to check my. Okay. Let me know when okay. you're ready. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. So, yes, I am ready. Shall I start? 
Yes. Hi, my name is Manjanatha, founder of Lead Carbon. Lead Carbon is a data-driven solution and nature networking for low-carbon societies. Here is our team. Our team members have many years of experience in the field. And uh, I completed my PhD in natural resource management. I'm expert in remote sensing, mission learning, carbon monitoring, and nature-based carbon captures. So what we are trying to follow the, solve the problems now. Carbon emitters and policy makers are looking for the nature-based solution and emission reduction to meet their commitment for high impact. However, the main challenges are transparent data and technology for supporting such commitment are still lacking. That's why I found Lead Carbon. Lead Carbon solution is to provide a platform where user can find the transparency of emission reduction, removal, carbon credit, and public engagement to achieve the commitment with our four key services. One, data as a service, DALT. Two, monitoring as a service, MAS. Three, carbon marketplace, or CMP. And nature networking, or NNA. Here is an example of our first product DAS. We generate and store the data in line with IPCC guidelines at any location on the earth over the last 40 years. And these data are updated regularly. We are ready to provide the customized land to land cover and carbon data for entire Thailand with 17 land cover categories from farmland to national scale. DAS data can use for the research effective nature-based solution planning and policy implications. Our second product, MAS, in Japan. With our technology, we classify 44 land cover categories in, in Japan, second national level land cover data. We are ready to provide monitoring service at city to national level by yearly and even monthly data in Japan. So here is an example of our mass system on agroforestry farms in Ryan. Mass can monitor individual trees, agroforestry, agroforestry, and also private forest and also protected areas at national scale. <clears throat> this is how our mass um, user profile look like. We provide our service to our customers in simple way that they can download the data in one click. We optimize speed up our technology to get the data in less than five seconds, even the city or even the provincial level. Here is our third service of carbon marketplace. Carbon emitters can find the carbon developers and related emission reduction to meet their commitment to net zero emission. Our project will be verified by global acceptable standards. And presently we have 6,000 tons of the carbon stock in our marketplace. Our fourth product is Nature Networking, is an app. Our Nature, nature Networking app allows users to plant and name a tree anywhere to show their care of the forest and climate change protection. We directed 33 million trees in Thailand and Bangkok alone. Here is a global market opportunity for our product and service. Our aim is to achieve 1% of this market by 2040. In Southeast Asia alone, our product mass and climate carbon marketplace have an opportunity of 6 billion US dollar by 2030. So this is where actually we are now targeting. So how our business model works, we charge 20% of carbon trading in our carbon marketplace. DAS and MAS, we provide the basic service for the testing and validated, value added service for our paid subscribers. What we are different from others, our technology allows us to offer customized individual solution to our customers at scale and speed in one place. Our services are simple to use and affordable. So we have 110,000 hectares of the reforestation area in our database for the nature-based carbon project development under well-recognized global standards. We are looking on off-takers with uh, partial payment and off-front investment for the project activities in these four uh, regions in Southeast Asia and Japan. It is our five years uh, milestone. From one to three years, we will introduce our DAS and MAS and marketplace in Thailand, Japan, Cambodia, and Vietnam. Fourth year, we will expand to whole Mekong region. And fifth year, we wanted to go for the global scale. Here is our five years plan for user and uh, project acquisition matrix. With five years, we aim to target 172,000 value added customers and 6,600 for MAS and um, 70 verified carbon projects in my. So if in five years, our technology takes six dimensions on the sustainability, social, economic, environmental, natural resource, technology, and governance with one solution. What farmers and forest owners will get from, get from our technology within five years, they can get 510 million US dollars from nature-based carbon credits, 41.1 million tons of CO2 emission can be, read, can be reduction done from our market place with our mass 21.59 million ton, million hectares of the forest can be protected within five years. So our technology proved by winning the awards, publishing the high impact journals in the top ranking uh, publications. We are in POC stage with Itachi in Japan and Shell. So here our strategic partners and we are open for the collaboration for expand our business in Thailand and also behind. Thank you. Thank you. So now we
to the Q and A sessions. Hi, this is Weeming again. Uh, yes, please. I think this is a great project. How long have you been building this business? In terms of, uh, I'd like to know, uh, in terms of the data that you have been uh, collecting. Um, actually, I started my business in May, April 2020 during the COVID situation. Within mm -hmm. one year, we did the um, POC for our all developing our apps and also like a you know, system. So this actual project has started since January 2022, and we targeted, or we collected, and we analyzed the data in entire South Southeast Asia within three months, and we are ready to go move on now. Uh, what do you think? Uh, what are the motivation factor that uh, those customers come on board to try on your services? Yes, our uh, main um, motivation is that. <clears throat> Our customers, like now in by 2030, so we are at carbon emitters and also at the Samsung policy maker, they need to go for the net zero emissions. So how we can get the data for the nature-based solution? So we are providing the solution here, even though no need to spend more time for collecting data and analyzing the data. Our data means our application, you just registered and you can get the data which is required for you. And at the same time, we can customize the data which is required. So based on our experience since last two months, in Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam, and Japan, actually we target almost 110,000 hectares of the land that where we go, we are going for the reforestation projects. And the data-wise, already 1,000 people, they already requested the data and we give them the, for the free testing for the DAS. Yes. And, and uh, how do you manage the data accuracy? So we publish our data and then we, we validate the data because I'm expert in the GS and remote sensing. I have I've been working like almost 15 years. So we validate our data using the government data, which they have submitted for the INDC, means NDC for the IPCC guidelines. Then we compare our results. Then we develop the deep learning, machine learning algorithms to match that. In Japan, which was a little bit challenging for us because we went through we break, through, we break through 42 land cover categories. Then we check and we validate our data and we got more than 89% of the accuracy. So it's real validation for data from the government data and also our um, lead carbon data. And yes. Okay, thank you very much for your answer. That's all I have, thank you. Thank you. Hi, uh, Manju, this is Bharat here. What is your traction so far in terms of revenues? So in terms of the traction, um, so far we have the, the test user, 1,000 uh, plus user for the dust. And uh, for the carbon marketplace, now we have 100 and plus farmers that who registered in Thailand. And we have more than 500, like you know, the people that, who, sorry, who has the forest owners in, um, Forest owners, we have more than 1,000 hectares. We have now 15 for 15 own project owners. In uh, Japan, we are discussing with uh, the local government, we have the more than 2,000 hectares of the forest areas. So we have now two clients in Japan also. So overall, like for the DAS, we have like no 1,000 place that we use our free data uh, for the test purpose. And mass, we have now 100 and that 110,000 hectares that we, which we go for the carbon uh, project development. In terms of the revenues, how much have we generated? You said in Jan started this year, right? Yes. So what has been your revenue? Our revenue, actually, we did not generate much at the moment because we have started now. All our projects need to go by international standards for the carbon project. So, um, but, but we got uh, uh, revenues from our uh, trainings that which we provide the Red Plus trainings. And also at the same time, we got two small projects from uh, Philippines that is nature-based solution project. So we monitor the bamboo distribution in Philippines. So that is almost 20, sorry, 24,500 US dollars. So that's we got so far, but for the real, all the uh, four our four services, so far very initial stage. 
Thank you. All the best. Yeah, thank you. Hi. Yes. Thank you for your presentation. So I'm Sky Public TV for Hashimoto. So if there is a strong point that the only you can do, please let me know. Uh, sorry, I did not get to do, please. Hello. Hello. Yes, sorry, I did not get point. Could you please repeat again? Okay. So if you have a strong point, strong unique point that uh, only you can do. Mm -hmm. Please let me know. Yes, um, we we can do in terms of um, developing the data which is required for our customers and also mm -hmm. developing the valued standardized carbon projects. So for the monitoring as a service, so we are able to like you know, do that. So we all we already have uh, two competitors in locally and globally, we also tested and we also check their uh, capabilities and we look at, we stand in front of in, uh, as compared to them in well. So we are able to do that. Okay, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Hello, is that okay? Yes, please. Okay, uh, uh, by the way, so I'm Kiyotaka Sakakibara from Risk Taker. Thank you so much for a great presentation. Uh, I'd like to ask you that, is there any possibility uh, for you to utilize this system for other industry aside from carbon? Ye yes, actually the data is very important. Yes, we can. Actually, there is a huge potential. We will be introducing the new uh, services very soon as mm -hmm. company goes. Thank you. Oh. Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you for your presentations. So let's move to the third team from Aus from Australia. Oh sorry, from Philippines. The team also made satellite feasibility assessment by Miss Sherry. Miss Sherry from Philippines. If you're ready, so please go ahead and share your presentations. And once uh, you're ready, we're gonna counting down the clock. So please go to the slide first. Uh, I can I can share it. Yeah. All right. Can you ah, see yes. it now? Yes, now I can see it. So once you're ready, please go ahead. Uh, yes. Hi, I'm Cherry Morillon, founder and lead innovator of Kawil AI from the Philippines in the Southeast Asian region. I am here to present to you our business proposal entitled Automated Satellite Traceability Assessment System or ASTAR system. The rapid growth of aquaculture and mariculture has brought significant conversion of mangrove forests into seafood farming sites. Traceability of food sources is not limited by process of acquisition and transportation. It is worthy to take note of the location for resource management. Satellite intelligence can help the aquaculture and mariculture industry reach sustainability and create renewable energy through mangrove restoration and carbon capture for climate change resilience. However, the lack of integrated data system for research, conservation, and clean energy is the pain points that we are addressing. Our solution is ASTRA, or Automated Satellite Traceability Assessment System, utilizing satellite imagery from Himawari 8 for real-time satellite imaging, or Michibiki for validation of GNSS for mangrove forest assessment and traceability for seafood farming sites. ASTA system is an AI-enabled mangrove detection model, which provide custom algorithm for a more area of interest mapping and modular architecture of data ecosystem for mangrove conservation that utilizes satellite imagery, artificial intelligence, and commutable analytical tools 
This will allow users to build their applications with integrated AI for easy to implement on-demand data. Our unique value proposition is to provide a creative financial model that will enable human and fishery sustainability utilizing space images. Second is to leverage most recent advancement of AI to create accuracy detection for precise policy making. And third is to provide a design core modularity system that allows flexible and interoperable data ecosystem. We have a two-sided business model. The entire solution is offered as a form of information as a service where customers are able to leverage both the data and infrastructure for different use cases. The model is more defined platform as a service. The pricing model is also a modified version of premium which, with fixed cost tier based on a purchase credit that you will just top up once you consume your credit. So why mangroves? The market for mangrove infrastructure is estimated to be $52 billion. And there is a $450 million mangrove forest, seafood ponds, and conservation sites in the Philippines, which is worth exploring for the market. As their system has a diversified business opportunity for both raw data to actionable data strategy system for mangrove accounting, conservation, monitoring, both for public and private interests. Our impact statement is to connect mangrove and people through satellite data for sustainable, scalable, and cost-effective ways that includes grassroots communities for a more inclusive solution. The team to implement the solution has more than 20 years of combined experience in building AI products and services from research to commercialization. We empower women in technology leadership. We are a lean and agile team of professionals rooted from the academia. We are Kawil AI, bringing AI technology from lab to life. Thank you. Hello, uh, thanks for the presentation. I have one question. So could you tell me a little bit more about your uh, customers specifically and why why they would like to pay to you? Uh, yes, uh, our customers are, our target customers are more on the uh, NGOs, government and academe also because they're the ones who need the data. So basically it's more on uh, environmental managers in general. Okay, thanks. So academia, research organization, and some uh, nonprofit organizations. Yes. And have you acquired any uh, customers yet? Or are you still uh, developing your actually, product? Actually, we are uh, introducing this uh, business uh, model and strategy for uh, satellite utilization. We are currently using a mobile app for our traceability, but it's more on the GPS uh, protection. So we are uh, kind of leveling it up and exploring the satellite uh, business. Yes. Okay, thank you. Hello, uh, I'm Manab Kimura from Sony. Uh, thank you for your great presentation. And uh, I have one question. Uh, this might be a, a general question uh, related to the artificial intelligence, but uh, when you utilize the artificial intelligence, uh, the cost uh, is not developing the AI itself, uh, but in generating uh, uh, running data, uh, this means uh, that even if you utilize the free images uh, without the free annotation, uh, there may be a lot of cost. So I'd like to know what kind, uh, how are you uh, trying to reduce the, such a uh, cost to generate the running data to develop the AI? Uh, I think uh, my uh, data scientist can uh, answer that. 
uh, Harley. Andrea, um, hello. Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yes. there are several ways that we are currently strategizing on how to do that. One is to leverage exist um, already existing initiatives. So probably utilize something called transfer learning to be able to mm -hmm. build up on the existing work. Another one is I think the, the majority of the cost would be coming from the set of labeled data. And so mm -hmm. what's happening right now is uh, we can utilize the ground truth data that exists from uh, the ones that are gathered by the government already, which used human mm -hmm. resources. So it's, mm -hmm. it's going to be using those existing data. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so then uh, I think the uh, differentiation point uh, will be needed to, uh, because the, if we utilize the, uh, both of the free images and also the free annotated data, uh, you, you have to have the uh, differentiation point. So that is my point uh, to you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. 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 Yes. Uh, yes. So uh, Hashimoto or it's a Skype affecting. So yes. I have uh, one question. So what is the biggest program to service? Uh, with this uh, proposal, we are solving the depleting mangrove forest that is being converted to uh, seafood uh, ponds. As we all know, uh, mangrove is one of the uh, sources of carbon sequestration or clean energy. So if, uh, like for example, in the Philippines, 85% uh, of the mangroves are already in critical uh, level. So we want to really provide the information that, hey guys, based on the satellite and information for management, you can use this information for uh, really conserve the mangroves. Because if they don't have the visual, visual uh, data is very powerful. People are into uh, social media right now and they're, it's more or the visual sensory. So if they see, they don't see any visual record, they won't act. So what we want to create first is the awareness that this is the current uh, situation of uh, mangrove. And okay. uh, using our system, you can have a more detailed, more actionable and more uh, uh, precise location on where to con start your conservation. So. Okay. Uh, that's what so I, I'm, I'm so sorry. Mention. So uh, I, I have uh, uh, questions who are very uh, basically question. So what is the biggest issue or program problem for uh, na, this business model? You have uh, it? Ah, oh, yes. Uh, it's more on the data, process data. Mm -hmm. a modular data that is readily available uh that's what we are uh the problem that we are addressing because there's no uh, uh actionable data they don't know how to interpret satellite data in terms of uh environmental conservation so that's for example that's the, so uh excuse me excuse me for example so uh you want to uh, something to data? Uh, it, uh, actually, it's more on the user who manage the mangroves. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, in, in some, uh, maybe can, my, my data scientists can, can uh, expound more on the uh, problem and solution, yes. Okay, okay, thank yeah, you. Harley. Um, so, well, the intent is uh, probably to, to help into the those who are trying to use data for con uh, mangrove conservation, like mentioned. So, for example, when 
let's just take one example. When a local government would want to map out its natural resources, they often deploy human uh, resources to actually go out there and really do the mapping um, manually. So that would uh, that would incur them to work with them to lower that kind of uh, cost for operations. Thank you for your presentation. Yes, so, thank you. Nice time up. Thank you very much. So next, I would like to move to the fourth team. The team indicated water detection, tracking prediction, forecast, estimation, and limitation by novel non-invasive techniques for indication management from India. So Mr. Lidish, we're gonna give the presentation. Am okay. I audible? So, yes. So once you're ready, the timer will start counting down. So please go ahead. I'm ready. Namaste. Omsat presents Shika Mungizu. We are a remote groundwater monitoring system focused on reducing the uncertainties of farmers and helping them find the right source of underground water resources and optimizing their energy, water use efficiency, and economical losses associated with it with higher precision and 75% reduced cost. Did you know two out of Five millions don't get access to clean drinking potable water. Since India is the largest exploiter of underground water resources, the amount of groundwater extracted by India every year is sufficient to flood the entire country of the United Kingdom. Therefore, OMSAT provides groundwater hydro analytics to farmer producer companies at $80 per hectare. We combine the dynamic interactions between land, air, and water to determine the best possible spot for locating, predicting, and forecasting underground water resources. All we require from our users is in the form of Google location, which is sent to us through WhatsApp. Our technology is interoperable with existing scatter-based systems since we provide our analytics in satellite view, street view, 3D view, and radar view, respectively. We have a spectrum of products ranging from groundwater forecasting, groundwater flow direction, groundwater prospecting, solar pump site suitability, etc. As one can see in our publication, we provide a comprehensive solution for the energy water nexus. The global groundwater monitoring market is estimated to be at $6.7 million billion. In terms of speed and accuracy of surveying a land, there is a big gap for unlocking a scalable solution. Therefore, our beachhead market is farmer producer companies of Maharashtra worth $44 million. OMSAT provides precision-driven satellite-based AI-enabled hydroanalytics for detecting, predicting, and forecasting underground water resources. Unlike traditional costly and time-consuming survey-based methods, we are able to provide all our services without physically being present on the field, hereby saving time and cost, both logistically and economically by 75%. At present, our groundwater detection algorithm is giving 90% accuracy and groundwater forecasting is giving 62% accuracy. In the next 12 months, we would be focusing on optimizing the accuracy of the groundwater forecasting model. We require funding of $400,000 for talent recruitment, creation of strategic collaborations with uh, space agencies such as JAXA, and getting POC opportunities with irrigation departments. We are a team of scientists, engineers, and big thinkers passionate about making ideas accessible and actionable. We were part of India's Chandrayaan-2 lunar mission and have been trained by ISRO, NASA, UN, USA, Google, and Harvard School of Design. Our consistent foundations are built on precision, innovation, and trust. Hunger, poverty, and farmer scarcity is on a rise in India again, and climate change continues to affect millions. By incorporating OMSAT solution into this existing ecosystem, will improve the basic socio-economical water supply and demand, and ensure equitable distribution of underground water resources. Come, join us in making the irrigation infrastructure of India resilient and sustainable. Thank you. I'm finished. Uh, you finished? Yes. OK, so, okay. so I think we can move to the Q&A question. Uh, yes, uh, hi. Uh, yes, please. 
Oh, Shibasaki-san, go ahead, please. Ah, okay, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, uh, I, I just wonder, uh, what kind of technology uh, you applied to detect and measure the underground water or any the ground yes. water? It's not so easy, as long as you just uh, use uh, some sort of the remote sensing data or whatever. And anyway, would you kindly show any materials uh, showing the how competitive your method is and how reliable it is, it, it, or it can be? Yes. So, so this is one of the Banda district of Uttar Pradesh. And uh, it, it, you can see a Google map you utilize to order uh, you know, pizzas or get uh, book your cabs from Ola Uber. So this is a typical kind of a Google map. And this is the European Space Agency C-band radar. So C-band radar, the maximum penetration depth is only five centimeters. Radar, which is able to penetrate 60 meters into the soil. So, so you see anything between five centimeter to 60 meter we are able to see and also able to detect paleo channels, buried rivers, which cannot be seen from the naked eyes, but from the L-band radar and its higher penetration capacity, we can see it. Now using a technique which is called as interferometry, we are able to isolate all the existing underground water resources between five centimeter to 30 meters. So this is the map of the uh, entire district. And if you could typically consider a manual survey that is by resistivity survey or any of the existing solution, this was th this would occasionally take you somewhere between three years to five years to do the survey, whereas we were able to do it within one month of survey. And our publication also has been published over here. We have been also validated the results using the existing uh, UAV-based radar, ground-based radar, and the resistivity survey equipment as well. Yes, sir. I see. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yes. Sir. Uh, yes, hi, this is Wei Meng. Now, uh, you talk about the accuracy is high, but yet the forecasting is uh, still challenging and you're working on it. Yes. So what are the challenges that you have for forecasting? Yes, sir. Sir, in, in terms of the forecasting models, we have different way, uh, models such as the CART, criteria, regression analysis. And uh, if you talk about groundwater, groundwater is a direct function of rainfall. So rainfall is a very variable component compared to all other components in the water cycle, considering evaporation, transpiration, condensation, and surface runoff. So basically, when we are able to quantify certain amount of forecast in terms of the rainfall, you are able to get a better understanding about the groundwater forecasting model as well. So we use the principle of the James Hutton, which is called as the principle of uniformitism, which is called as the present, present is a key to the past. So using the same principle, we utilize uh, a check last 20 years of data, gravimetry data, satellite gravimetry can also get, get you uh, the changes in the depths of uh, groundwater tables across time and space. And using uh, multi-sensor multi, multi -sensor parameterization, we are able to detect and do the forecasting model. So groundwater budget is something that we look into when we talk about the ground groundwater forecasting model. Okay, yeah. and uh, how is this validated? Uh, seems like, uh, do you have any customers uh, that had already, so to speak, validated and, and uh, did a pilot? Yes, yes. So, so the project which I showed in the published uh, literature, it is uh, it was done uh, in accordance with the district magistrate's office of uh, Banda district of Uttar Pradesh. So there we had impacted 8 lakh farmers who are living into this entire district. So and, uh, we were also able to tell you what is the present level, February 2022, and what would be the uh, levels in 2025 how, because of the changing and depleting tables due to over exploitation of groundwater tables. So we, we were able to forecast that as well. And our technology is validated by the Indian Council of Agriculture Research Water Technology Division and then the Central Groundwater Board. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks. Um, this is Damron Witt. Um, do you see any difference between the land of India and land of Thailand, for example? Like the groundwater, uh, when you see the um, underground water in India, it might be possible 
um, rather than the underground water in the central part of Thailand. Do you see any difference in, in each uh, of the land? Yes, sir. In fact, the geology is different for the both the countries because uh, two thirds of India is into the hard rock terrain. So we need what the only requirement that we require from any of the users, he may be situated in any part of the world is to send his Google location. So based upon his location details, we are able to do the parameterization and come up with the best spot where you can able to get the groundwater. So if you talk about groundwater, groundwater in uh, hard rock areas is found, found between cracks and fissures. So from the L band satellite, we are able to find these gaps and cracks through which surface water is percolating into the groundwater. So th those pockets are being identified from the technology. And, and do you need the ground survey? Because if, if no. we send a location from, from Thailand to you in India, is it, is it just location or what do we need to send it to you? Yes, you just need to share us the location. We have almost all the data available with us. Even in Thailand, right? Yes. Thank you. Hello. Yes, Hello, uh, this, is, this is Laura Anderson. And uh, again, thank you so much for your presentation. My question relates to the different regulatory environments that exist country to country and even in some, some countries, state to state uh, or region to region. And um, how much have you research have you done into the regulatory environments and how it may either enable your growth strategy or, um, or restrict that? Well, so Laura, in terms of the regulatory uh, uh, regulations, the most of the important uh, parameters when we talk about the process of groundwater exploration, we, we come into the targeting and prospecting part of it, which is the most preliminary step when you do the groundwater exploration, then comes the drilling part. So most of these regulations are most governed towards the drilling part of it, not towards the exploration part of it. So as such, uh, we don't have to deal with any regulatory uh, part because here what we are giving is data, data in the sense that whether a farmer is having water or he's not having water. The major cost, as I said, it is in drilling. So whether you should go for drilling or you should not go for drilling, we can tell you from our analytics. And, and also a question is um, just extending from there, how that might then influence your partnership models that can help fuel your growth. Have you done much work on that? Yes, so uh, we have targeted... Uh, we have targeted uh, the FPOs and NGOs uh, working in areas of uh, ground, groundwater conservation for that aspect. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. So let's move to the team number five. Team. Okami and indicated a fourth paid on early warning by Mr. Karen. Hello, uh, Konnichiwa, bonjour. Uh, if you're ready, Karen, please yes. uh, share the screen. Can't see the timer. Okay, if you're ready, you can. Can you see the timer? Uh, it's one know. of these uh, cells. It's okay. I don't need it. I don't need the man. Thank you. So, uh, hello. Uh, good morning and good afternoon. Uh, I am Karan Behar, Technology Head of iSenses from currently based in Toulouse, France. And joining me is our uh, collaborator and uh, PI, Dr. Ahmed Albitar from Kines. Uh, 
so the name of our project is okami it's an integrated approach based early warning uh, system for uh, providing in early warning adequate early warning for outburst uh, floods caused by glacier melt or landslides and geological uh, disasters so the himalayan region is a prominent part of the third pole of the earth of earth many strong important uh, life sustaining rivers originate from them so himalayan tibet they are called the third pole but because of there is a strong correlation between the human induced anthropogenic induced climate change and the the de, the degradation and the uh, melt rate of glaciers uh, this causes a lot of uh, uh, incidents disaster in incidents which are which may cause, cause like for example floods which are called glop or jokalop in iceland and landslides uh, so there and uh, there are presently 552 at risk sites and 55000 uh, moraine dams in this region created so this graph and the images show like this the there was a major disasters for example 2013 there was uttarakhand fund flood in kedarnath so indian continent has the highest number of deaths in the world and uh, the loss was around 200 billion yen to the state of uttarakhand uh, this is a very precarious situation because uh, this uh, glacier melt and uh, reduction of snow cap is one of the prominent existential threat which humanity has so what we do we have uh, created a technology for uh, exploring and locating potential anthropogenic natural or or hybrid uh, disaster such as outburst moraine discharge uh, with a technology driven approach and which is better than the conventional approaches which are as patchwork and many times pseudo scientific or not uh, active and how we do it we provide a platform as a service solution for uh, which is uh, in using uh, space borne air borne and ground borne sensors active passive to do this detection prediction modeling forecast of uh, such events and uh, at a very reduced cost 75% with the current team so we have covered 4000 approximately 4500 kilometers have been partnering with 34 disaster recovery agencies and ngos and 800 800000 lives have been uh, integrated so we have developed a machine learning model which uh, considers 50 76 points and the price point of our technology is around yen 55000 per hour per annum so this is an this is our strategy what we do we use various assets for example space one alos daichi and uh, michibiki qzz for developing the interferometry and the rate of uh, melting of glaciers and uh, then uh, one they they give us the special oversight and the regions of interest are continuously monitored by ground based task groups this is better than eo technology which is passive so this is our multi band radar which has been developed first time in the world using this kind of thing and our competitive is we, we have done various competitive analysis so it is an ensemble uh as compared to our competitors our strengths are provide multi parameter and we are partnering with local institutions uh, so our portfolio we have current clients like indian army ntpc and been awarded by bill and melinda gates foundation also undr and uh, we have been uh, plans to scale up and grow in this thank you I'll be happy to take question. Thank you very much. So, okay, please move to the Q and A session.
Uh, hi, I'm a risk taker, Akiyota Sakakibara. Thank you so much for presentation. So you said that you have client already, right? So you have already generated several revenue already? Yes. So uh, at present, we are in, uh, in working with in the Indian government, mm -hmm. the National Disaster Agency, and mm -hmm. also in discussions with NTPC because they had a major uh, $200 million worth of uh, uh, disaster last year in month mm -hmm. of February because of uh, the glacial induced floods in Uttarakhand mm -hmm. and the entire dam was lost. So at the same time, we have been also been supported by European Union. So we have received uh, funding by the... Oh, yes. I see. That is not oh. like, that is not like sales, just only for uh, funding. Yeah, but this funding is for like, you know, developing the technology further and, and, and the sales part of it. Uh, I see. Okay. But our customers are uh, the, uh, these are like, you know, disaster agencies from mm -hmm. national to state level. They'll be also, uh, which can, uh, so what we have is we provide them an app and GIS based application for mm -hmm. early warning. And uh, this is also applicable in other industries, for example, not only hydropower, but mining and uh, geotechnical applications. Mm -hmm. I see. In, in uh, so additional question, in terms of like a feedback from those customers, so or those customers says like any, like the point that you'd like to improve or uh, you need to improve or like some, some uh, lost, lost point that you need to you know, provide more. Uh, as such, in case of the uh, glacier and uh, snow, which is chirosphere based uh, events, mm -hmm. uh, the science is not developed yet because there are many, many uh, factors which contribute to such events. Oh. So in this case, our solution is one of the unique in the world because we are not only taking the space borne assets, we are also doing uh, aspects to know about uh, how is the situation, but also doing airborne survey, altimetry, and then ground-based things. And this, this system that we have developed is this inclusion of this, the, the stitching of them together is an innovation in this area. So we, we are one of the, uh, I would say, uh, one of the unique cases in this world. But in case of other industry, like mining industry, and maybe like where there are uh, like, you know, uh, what is called the dam tailings. So there is like, we are competing with the geotechnical companies, uh, for example, Geopravent and, uh, and, uh, other companies like that. And that, that is more of, uh, uh, the, it, it is, uh, more based on the, like, you know, how much accurate early warning you can provide for uh, the mine or dam collapse. And uh, that is like also uh, our price point is the is better than any, any one of the competitors mm. because we are providing is it is a service. Uh, yes. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Hi, this is Wee Ming. Um, question is that uh, when you say early warning, how does your solution? I understand it's a holistic solution, but uh, how does it impact those? disaster uh, recovery agencies, uh, how does it really helps them to differentiate uh, that they are just using the uh, geospatial data from yours? Uh, if I've understood correctly. So in case of like geospatial data, uh, the limitation is based on the repetitivity of the satellite which is one factor constraint. So for example, a loss pulsar is every 12 days we get in the uh, Indian region. And uh, at the same time, satellite gives you a quite a uh, wider synoptic view. So we are actually complementing it by doing airborne surveys and the ground-based system is giving you near real time of a particular region of interest. So satellite helps us to identify the troublesome regions, which are indicated here by this uh, circles, 
but these triangles are the exact points over which we need to do continuous uh, survey. So this gives a complete uh, aspect of it. Although I will not say it is complete, but this gives a quite a uh, good aspect of it. And uh, then the agencies, they, they get uh, the inputs from us on our uh, this uh, map and also app. So whenever there is a high probability of an event to happen, they get uh, early warnings. So how does this early warning data in terms of outcome impacts how they will look at prevention of a disaster? Yeah, um, maybe uh, Karen, I can add an element here. Uh, with the technology presented by Essence, which is combining the uh, data-driven approaches, but also local information because it's a challenging mountainous regions, the uh, citizens can be actually alerted by the institutions or by just simple SMS so that they can evacuate the right regions. See, uh, 62,000 uh, people were stranded in one year. These people, if they were informed, they would have moved. And many of the uh, disasters may happen in the night and people just cannot react. So what is happening is that with the information that's delivered, they can pinpoint where the effort should be done. It's very, very, very large regions. So moving even the helpers and the workers, uh, uh, emergency services across the area is actually very difficult. So by the providing the risk area, this helps the citizen move to the right places and evacuate correctly. All right, thank you. Thank you so much for your presentation. Thank you. Okay, so I would like to move to the last team before we break. Team number six, the Project Icarus from Mr. Ryan. Yes, Australia. If you're ready, please share your screen and check if the timer is ready for you. Okay. Okay, perfect. Uh -huh. I'm just going to share right. my screen. You can share your screen. I can see and the timer. Once you are starting, the timer will start. All right, I'm okay. starting now. Now I'm starting now. Hi, everyone. I just click this. Oh, there we go. Hi, everyone. My name is Ryan Billing Dollar. I'm from Australia, and my presentation is about new approaches to space based solar power titled Project Icarus. So, so briefly, space based solar power refers to the use of solar energy collecting satellites in orbit to generate grid power on Earth. This can be done via mirrors, lasers, or microwave power beaming. This concept was originally proposed in 1968 by the United States Dr. Peter Glazer, being continuously developed over the last 50 years. Today, JAXA is the world leader in space-based solar power technology and has plans to generate gigawatt scale grid power with it by the 2030s. However, ultimately, the greatest barrier to realizing this technology is high orbital launch costs, which may delay these ambitious goals. So in terms of our presentation today, uh, the key goal of this project is to first ask, can space-based solar power be used to power moving targets, since it's currently just been looked at powering fixed targets on the ground? And the second question we want to answer is, can space-based solar power be used to reduce orbital launch costs? Because that's the real big barrier to making it uh, a reality. So this is where we'd like to introduce uh, Icarus, the solar concord. Uh, research by the United States into nuclear-powered aircraft in the 1950s demonstrated that aircraft engines can be powered by heat alone. So this is where heat from some source is directed towards uh, the combustion component of a jet engine, which enables it to generate thrust. And that's been validated at an experimental level, but it hasn't been put into place. Uh, so this next generation Concorde will be powered by a laser beam from a solar satellite. So obviously this sounds very ambitious, but it'll make sense as we move on. So while speakers vary, the Concorde is reported to have required 180 megawatts of power for supersonic crews at Mark II. And this is something that's achievable with the one gigawatt uh, you know, solar station goal that JAXA has set out for the future. So in particular, the low divergence of laser-based solar satellites is very promising to make this a reality as the laser can be confined to the uh, width of a flying plane. Um, due to not needing fuel, the proposed Icarus aircraft aims to be larger than the Concorde and potentially travel faster with the lower mass as well, since it doesn't need any fuel. And this is all while being completely solar powered. 
Enabled by a global constellation of solar satellites, this aircraft could fly with practically infinite range with inherently zero carbon emissions. Um, however, obviously creating this future uh, requires a way to cheaply launch objects to orbit. So this is something that we think that space-based solar power can also help achieve. In particular, we'd like to propose a three-stage approach to achieving this. Initially, for the first stage, um, stage one will utilize Japan's H3 launch vehicle, which is in active development, to assemble a solar power station in low Earth orbit at an altitude of 300 kilometers. The orbit ground track is intended to pass over both Japan and Australia so that both countries can access this technology. Here, completion of the stage one solar satellite will, create, will be able to produce a laser power beam to ground-based targets in a 600 kilometer um, radius around the satellite itself. This then enables the second stage uh, where launch costs can be uh, reduced. In this phase, uh, liquid nitrogen in a single stage rocket will be superheated to 3000 Kelvin using a laser beam from a solar satellite. This rocket would thus produce thrust at a specific impulse of approximately 900 seconds, which is double conventional rocket fuels with liquid and oxygen being the best. Uh, this will be enabled via the use of a solar powered uh, electric turbo pump within the rocket. And once in orbit, this single stage rocket can then uh, land back at the launch site roughly 24 hours after launch using a power to send to enable it to you know, be reused after uh, landing without any need for ablative shielding. Importantly, this enables the cost efficient construction of an orbital solar ring of solar satellites around Earth with consecutive launches. <laughs> This orbital ring of satellites then lets the Solar Concorde test out its infinite flight capabilities, so long as it can fly westward faster than Earth's rotational speed of 1600 kilometers per hour. This unlocks the, I'll just move to the next slide, there we go. This unlocks the final phase of the launch program where a hypersonic Solar Concorde can stratospherically launch a rocket, which can then glide out of the atmosphere and uh, use a carbon stock fuel uh, that's ablated by the solar satellite to reach orbital velocity and similarly can be captured by a um, mid-air, you know, re-entry. Moving on, this page just summarizes the uh, technological feats of each of these development proposals and shows that as each stage progresses, as it uses less fuel, uh, it's actually able to reduce launch costs quite substantially. Now, moving forward, we can also see in the context of solar satellites, this helps to reduce uh, the cost of launching the satellites quite substantially, which is crucial for developing further. Now I'm happy to take further questions. Okay, thank you very much for your presentation. We're gonna move to the Q and A questions. Okay, so thank you. please start uh, your Q and A. I'm open to questions. Hi Ryan, thank you so much. It was a great presentation. I just want to know where are you in your journey right now? Is it still in the lab, or <laughs> is it something? Because it's a very ambitious project, right? I think yes, uh, this is worthy of pitching to Elon Musk. Um, <laughs> Interesting. So I just wanted to check with you. Where are you in your journey? Is so I'm lab? currently 20 years old. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Uh, I'm currently 20 years old at the moment in Australia. And um, what's kind of interesting is as I'm nearing the end of my degree at the moment, um, Australia is developing orbital launch capacity. And this isn't something that we have established at the moment. So we're very much open to new ideas and, and building uh, launch capacity. And so moving towards the future, as I actually come from a biomedical science background, I have an interest in space medicine. And as various projects have shown, uh, a key barrier to taking advantages of microgravity, other things has been to reduce orbital launch costs. And now I understand that I don't necessarily come from a technical background, but this is something that's very well researched that I can show for references here in terms of the great precedent for this technology. This is just combining existing, uh, I guess, uh, technologies that are in the works. And so in my journey, this is something that I guess becomes a bit of a life goal as I'd love to be able to, you know, do surgery in orbit one day. And this seems like it's definitely a, a platform potentially enabling that to happen. Okay, great. All the best. Thank you. I see Laura, you had your hand up, so I'll pick you. I invite your question. Yes, well, thank you, Ryan. And again, excellent presentation and uh, look forward to seeing you in Australia sometime soon. Um, I also, um, uh, I think just extending a little bit out from what Varad said, it, it's uh, wonderful and 
an ambitious and uh, an Elon Musk type of a project. And as you know, Robin Denham, who's the global chair of Tesla, is uh, in Australia. She lives in Sydney, as you know. And uh, but my question comes down to: uh, it sounds like it's a concept at the moment because it obviously would have um, very uh, large capital costs, and therefore mm -hmm. the partnerships that would be required to deliver this would be significant. Have you done much work on um, on engaging with um, uh, different potential partners as you move into the future, or is it truly just in the idea stage? So at this stage, this is a concept that I've uh, pitched towards the Australian Space Agency, and they've recognised that it has some semblance of promise. Uh, in terms of actually going towards JAXA S booster, obviously, as you mentioned, this is quite a uh, almost multinational kind of level uh, proposal. Uh, that's the purpose of, I guess, participating in S booster because currently, as an Australian, there's not particularly any platform that this can be raised through. And as JAXA, the Japanese Aerospace uh, Association, uh, has actually the world's most leading plans to develop space-based solar power. This represents something uh, that, that can be used to further commercialize their existing technology uh, in terms of launching uh, space-based solar stations into orbit. And so in particular, uh, this proposal looks to engage JAXA and then show that there's potentially more room for, um, I guess, markets where instead of just looking at power grid generation as a sole cost or sorry sole source of revenue uh, this is something where you could potentially use it to power plans where as a captive audience uh, it's something that they would definitely pay more to actually enable you know access emissions free supersonic transport so at this stage the journey is happening at the moment and i hope to be that you guys could help facilitate that transition to the finals if if that's possible thank you All right thank you ryan uh, thank you Yamamoto. Thank you. Hello, Ryan. Thank you for uh, thank you for presentation. Am I correct to understand you're going to pr proceed um, both solar satellite and uh, launch system? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And I presume it will require huge capex. So I would like to understand how much capex do you expect to need, and also what is your core technology? to contribute to achieve this goal. So just in terms of the first aspect of it, did you say capital? CapEx, how, how much money do you need? Oh, CapEx, yes, yes, thank you. Uh, and so in terms of developing this, this is uh, where, you know, you, the first solar satellite that you launch into orbit can be achieved with launch costs of $2,500 per kilogram. And so the, the in order to reduce costs, you need to, I guess, pay for that outright. And that would then need to be able to power a rocket launch, which in itself for potentially 22 ton payload would require a gigawatt. So that means that would be like $10 billion of capital to enable this to reach like the first point where it can start to scale. So obviously there's a substantial, I guess, um, sum in the sense, yes. And then the key technology contributions here. Uh, so obviously with the Concorde, it's kind of, I guess, low on sense because that's already well established as like a technology. You can find the plans for that and then, you know, reroute uh, from a solar collecting service to the engine to, to, to power it. So that's something that's like, there's little contributions to be made there. But the main contribution comes from, I can just find this slide correctly, here. Uh, where you have a solar thermal rocket engine assembly where you use a um, what's it called a liquid hydrogen cooled solar panel to power an electric motor which then powers the turbo pump and this then enables you to I guess get a, a more lightweight efficient uh, and activity of the rocket and also you have a liquid hydrogen heat exchanger and so that is something that kind of has to be built from the ground up since the precedent for this, which was the Nerva rocket uh, that was created by NASA in the 1950s, uh, has now like been defunct for 60 years. So you kind of do have to reinvent um, that technology in some degree. Yeah, but uh, uh, let me confirm, what kind of a technology does your, do, does your company have? Company have, in terms of development now, with yes, regards. now, now. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Well, right now, going into this competition, is that as a concept stage? So Concept stage, okay, okay, I understand. Yeah, yeah. All right, I yeah. understand. Thank you. No problem. If that's, I think that's my time. So yeah. thank yes. you for um, all, Now, all the six team has been finished the presentation. So it's, it's 
actually the time for the break, but I think we gonna we have like a 15 minute ahead of our schedule. So what could be what shall we be back from 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 Escooter Secretariat? Can you recommend the time for for the back? Yeah. Until when? So two fifty um ICT. I see. Four fifty. So ten two. All right. So four fifteen so, Japan. Yeah. Oh. Stop. Stop. Sorry. Apologies. Uh, correction. Yes. Okay. So I think we're so gonna, we're gonna be, be starting three o five ICT. I see. So next team gonna be the team from India, Jalashaya, fight water near you. So please be back on time, fifteen o five. Okay. In the meantime, we gonna put some kind of a sponsor promotion for you to enjoy and see you again in 15.05. Thank you. To the second half of the uh, S booster Asian Rap. I hope you uh, the next team lady finding water near you without the uh, further delay. I would like to invite Mr. Vikram to give the pitch presentation. Thank you. Can you aid my audio audible to you, sir? Yes, now I can hear you. Uh, Sound. Thank you. You can start uh, your screen. Give me a second. I'll share my screen. Okay. Is screen visible? Can you please confirm me? Yes. Once lady, the clock will start counting down. So let's go. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Can I start now? Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome you all from the back. Uh, back from the break. Uh, my name is Vikram Gulecha. Uh, I am speaking to you from Karnataka in the in India. Uh, today we are going to present in our case where we use satellite imagery to monitor lake water quality uh, changes. The problem what we are talking calls not just for attention but for real action. There are over 36,000 small lakes and ponds in the state of Karnataka alone in India. And only 2% of them are today monitored for their water quality on a regular basis. And even this regular basis is probably just twice or thrice in a year. The reason why we have chosen to use satellite imagery to monitor these widespread lakes is because it can be accessed from anywhere and everywhere. It is easier for us to flag trends and anomalies and note the seasonal changes which happens on the ground. The best part about the satellite imagery is that we are able to now get the historical records and we can build in a retrospective analysis on the water quality changes which has happened in the lake water form. And additionally, it is a very cost effective approach in comparison to the traditional monitoring tools. What we measure is certainly about the lake health which sustains its life, monitoring the effluence, the eutrophication and various water quality parameters helps us in classifying the lakes accordingly, whether it is highly polluted or it's becoming polluted or it is becoming good. By measuring 
the water quality with the principle of light, we are able to derive an optical signature. And these concepts helps us in develop a remote sensing analysis tool to deliver the geospatial AI with a contextual based dashboard reporting system to our clients, which helps us in making the decision making ability faster and better. We offer our services on a subscription based model to our clients to monitor the water bodies over a given region. India records about 70% of the world's population, but it has only 4% of total world's freshwater reserves. With an area running into millions of hectares, it's a massive opportunity in India alone when the program starts. We primarily would promote our solutions uh, to the pollution monitoring agencies who demand accountability for the water quality changes happening in any given regions. Additionally, water utilities and corporations which work under the sector of lake conservation or lake maintenance also happens to be our target customer base. With our revenue, with our revenue plans of zero investment uh, infrastructure setup costs for the clients, the range of services on a pay-per-use model includes whether a one-time service or a recurring service or even custom-made solutions depending on the client's requirement. We publish white papers and try to garner interest uh, from the uh, sector. And with strategic partnerships, we would look, we, we would be looking at uh, building those conversations and convert them into relationships. Over a period of time, we look to impact a larger uh, range of cities in India. And with enhanced product portfolio, we look at expanding our solutions within the region and also outside. Our surveillance monitoring network provides a comprehensive and long-term picture of a given water body status across the region. The operational network which we develop is a very cost-effective solution and costs just one-tenth of traditional methods. We provide our clients with a scalable solution which can capture a widespread region of lakes on an interactive dashboard. Our team is a combination of experts uh, who have won credits in the past for innovation in deep water. And now we're looking at building up the next innovation to monitor water quality changes across these bodies over a large scale. This is one of our case studies, which we did uh, with the Bangalore uh, Pollution Control Board in Karnataka, uh, where we validated our technology with given comparisons from the state pollution control board. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think now it's time for Q and A session. Yes. So please go ahead. Uh, hi, this is Weeming. Let me just ask the first question. Now, you use light to determine the quality of the water. So, yes. uh, uh, basically, how does this uh, uh, validate it? Uh, and uh, how, what about at night? How are you going to then measure them? Okay, so we have uh, measured from the algorithms developed by our team, we have measured uh, certain parameters in the water. Uh, namely turbidity, temperature, and so on. And we validated it, so we went back in time, we took the in-situ data, which was collected by the Pollution uh, Control Board or the Pollution Authority in the past, and uh, we created uh, the previous year's data comparison sheet. And you see that uh, our uh, analysis from the satellite imagery from the historic records matches over 95 to 96% uh, in comparison to the in situ data which is taken. Now, this in situ data is taken only once in a period. And uh, with more and more satellites uh, going up the sky, uh, we believe that the frequency of collection of these data uh, 
uh, can be made uh, quite faster so that any corrective actions required uh, at the lake or at the uh, water body can be taken in the shortest time. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Yeah, uh, I have uh, one question. Uh, before that, uh, thank you for your presentation. And um, my question is that uh, uh, I'd like to confirm that the, you just see the change you know, the uh, quality of the water. And the, yes, I think it might be better to find that, uh, for example, the cause you know, of the such a water quality change, and also uh, to eliminate the, such a uh, cause. So yeah, that is my comment for you. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. We will uh, take your suggestions and uh, uh, would consider uh, integrating them as a part of our office. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I have uh, one question, uh, it's a quick one, but uh, how often do you need to um, uh, monitor by uh, satellite? Do you need to uh, monitor so, every week or every day or how often do you need to monitor? So uh, again, it depends on the uh, client's requirement. We can give it to them based on the cycles of the satellite or uh, we're using the combination of satellites. Uh, our team is prepared to give them a weekly report uh, if it is needed. So we just have to procure uh, various satellite images uh, from different satellites and run our algorithm. What kind of uh, satellites are you um, uh, expecting to use? Uh, so currently we're using Sentinel-2. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, is there any other questions from the judge or sponsor? All right. Okay, I think if there's no, shall we proceed to the next team? Okay, so thank you very much for the team. The yes, fine water near you, Mr. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Yes, okay, next for the eighth team, I would like to invite the team NERFS Navigation of Early Rescue Plot System for Network Transportation from Mr. Mas. Hello. Yes. So... Can you can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, right. so I would like to share our screen. My yes. Screen. So once you are starting to present the timer will uh, start so let's go the floor is yours okay all right okay 
Okay, good evening and konnichiwa everyone. Um, I'm Mas Oma, I'm from Malaysia and we, I would like to present our NERF, a navigation and early rescue flood system for network transportation. Um, here's our team members. Uh, we consist of seven people who has their important roles in pursuing our goals to solve a very critical issue that is need to be solved uh, urgently. Um, what is the issue? The issue is the flash flood issue. Um, this flash flood issue is actually um, a common issue that's happened in those countries that is raining season that is now unpredictable, uh, whereby um, it can happen anytime and which causes problem for us road users, especially stranded motorists and vehicle damage and also cause time wastage. And unfortunately, sometimes death occurs, which saddens all of us. Uh, it's projected that if this problem is not solved, it will affect 450 million people by 2050. So what's the problem when fresh flood happen? Well, when fresh flood happen, um, the warning system is actually malfunctioning which is caused by the system communication disruption, which actually result in no evacuation solution. And also the emergency planning will be much delay and also problem for those who are stranded in the flash flight. So how to solve this problem? So our team has come up with a solution. Our technology solution consists of AI, technology, satellite, IoT, and navigation system. This will help the road user, stranded road user, and also the rescue team to help those who are stranded uh, during flash flood. This is our whole NERF architecture. So how does it work? Okay, first, if you can see number one, uh, we have a flash flood ground detection device on this place on strategic location uh, that will receive the GNS data, the location of the flash flood. And the detection device will detect whether or not the place have flash flood or not. So once uh, there's a flash flood detected, then the whole data will be transferred to an AI centralized monitor. And the data will be viewed in an IoT platform that can be monitored by the public. And there will be also satellite data and this data that is provided to the AI centralized monitor during flash flood that will generate the root generation for those who are stranded in the area that is being flash flood to help them to evacuate to the nearest evacuation center. And upon the problem of evacuation for stranded users, for example, they are not able to reach the evacuation center, then they were able to request an assistance to the AI status monitor. And this, our system will generate a route towards the rescue team to their location, the road user location, to help them evacuate safely. At the moment, we have already uh, currently developed the flash flood ground detection device and also the uh, AI satellite monitor system, and we are further improved on the technology. So this is how our NERF implementation works. Uh, every device that's been placed in strategic location where the flash, flash flood occurs um, covers up to five kilometer radius. This device communicate via LoRa One. So even if there is a disruption in the Wi-Fi service, our device is able to communicate and provide real time assistance towards those who are stranded and also to the rescue team. The system impact of our NERF is that it's reduced losses, reduced costs, and safe life and belonging. And most important that it can be implemented in real time. Our competitive advantage is that it is a flood mitigation strategy, network transportation that utilizes real-time AI and IoT system based on satellite data used in mapping, positioning, and monitoring. And it's specialized in urban areas. Our business model, B2B, business to business, is targeted to city council and also richest institute. Our B2C, business to customers, is targeted for road users and motorists to help them evacuate safely. And also for team rescue, that they want to help them to evacuate. Our NERF is your urban flash flood solutions that is aligned with three SDG goals. The SDG number three, good health and well-being. SDG 13, climate action. SDG 11, sustainable cities and communities. Those who are having a same goal as us, we invite you to join us in our development of NERF. Thank you and for listening.
session question. Thank you very much. Now it's time for Q&A question. So you can go ahead. Thank you. Oh, I'm Shibasaki. Could I have one question? Uh, yes. it, it's yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, it seems to me that your idea or kind of proposal uh, looks quite practical and also very useful. But I, I just wonder, for example, uh, how are you going to use the satellite radar for your solution? It seems to me again that just the ground-based uh, sensors would be just enough to detect and also the uh, predict the inundation along with the uh, urban road network? Uh, thank you for the question. Um, we are using the satellite um, navigation and also satellite mapping um, to map our, uh, our system so that it will provide a very uh, safe route that is uh, to avoid uh, the flash flood uh, in certain radius. Um, so um, the, GP, uh, the GPS, uh, value and also the, the satellite image means that the satellite of the recreation center data that we captured uh, from the satellite is will also be used in our system and also uh, our system um, we also want to use a, a product that can also receive ews so we um, actually uh, wanted to collaborate with qzss uh, to receive any uh, early warning system for other um, uh, disaster than flash flood. I see. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for the question. Hello. Let me have one question. Uh, by the way, I'm Kyoto Kasakaki Brown from Jap uh, from Risk Taker. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, by the way, I I used to live in Jakarta in Indonesia. By the way, Jakarta. before three years back. So that's why I have already experienced you know flood situation there so but uh, my question is that are uh, how do you think that are uh let's say th this is you know are like i uh th this is you know flood are uh, you're investing you think you know, flood. Flood, yeah flash flood right i know yeah, 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 yeah. so in that time let's say in jakarta is there any rescue route left so in the flood situation let's say you know I oh. think in Jakarta, there's already every place in Jakarta is flooded. So, in you know, in the big rain. So, okay. no, how do you uh, think about that? Okay, thank you for the uh, very good question. So, yeah, your concern if there is no evacuation center at the place, is it correct? Yes. Ah, uh, yeah. So actually, our system um, can um, honestly can be embedded only if there's an evacuation route. It means that. If there is a request route uh, to for means that or the authority have to design a place that people can evacuate means that if there's no place to evacuate, so the, our only our system can only help to evacuate to the nearest safest place means that the authority if there's no uh, evacuation center, so they just have to set um, the place that is safe that is known to be safe to for people oh. to evacuate. Uh, so it does not have to be uh, already there, but mm -hmm. it's something that. Um, can be implemented in the system. It means that if I for Jakarta, I'm not sure, I'm sorry, but if, for example, in Malaysia, if you want to go for a safe place, for example, if the mosque is the safe place, so the authority can also already uh, designate the area for, mm -hmm. for safe places um, prior for the system, the, the system uh, being, being uh, deployed. Uh, I hope I answer your question. Oh, I see, I see. Okay. Um, my, any, okay, thank you so much. So uh, I understand uh, already your questions. Yes, hello, this is Laura Anderson. And uh, again, thank you so much for your presentation. My questions um, extend from uh, the fact that, um, as you were saying, your business model um, embeds ground device detection and uh, that are effective within about a 5k radius, I believe is what you said. Um, but I, I was wondering in your projections into the future and therefore your um, expectations on um, uh, the need for capital, what, uh, how many devices do you think you would uh, be implementing um, in the next, let's say two to three years? And what are the costs to manufacture those devices? And are there any maintenance um, considerations? 
Okay, um, thank you. Thank you, Mad Mad Madam, uh, for the good question. Um, uh, actually, we have done some uh, projection on, on our, 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 our site. Um, we, uh, we are actually expanding in Malaysia first. So our projection is actually for the first year is uh, 550. Uh, 50, uh, 50, 50 devices uh, and actually our projection is that we need about uh, 200,000 USD uh, to produce an um, increment of 50, 100 and 150 uh, projection um, for our devices and, and these uh, devices uh, is actually being sold, uh, we are currently targeting the uh, city council uh, and also the uh, research institute that in need of uh, monitoring using GPS and, and also that's not just our prototype uh, we sell the proto uh, sorry we sell the device of the ground device but we're also targeting the license uh, means that the system that we, we have been using also be uh, sell for instance uh, annually the license and also the maintenance of uh, taking care of the product itself and also uh, the person uh, user that want to use uh, the what you call that the evacuation route also have to pay a slight uh, of, uh, I mean, very small uh, amount of uh, uh, what you call that uh, uh, maintain maintenance. I don't call maintenance fee. Something like a uh, monthly fee uh, to ensure that uh, they keep on using the uh, the system for their safety. This one maybe the uh, I'm projecting if the road user is uh, will not copy it, but in certain countries like Malaysia, maybe the government uh, will have to uh, give us uh, the, the the paying for the the usage because it's very important uh, for uh, safety of the citizens. And also um, in uh, we are also planning on using this to be sell in uh, what you call that uh, industries um, that has a need of uh, monitoring um, more to like uh, what you call that uh, sensors uh, that that needs. Uh, a different uh, approach, not just uh, this root equation, but uh, something else uh, that can be also be done by using uh, these uh, devices that has uh, the automation of the uh, mapping uh, come out. So I hope I answer your question. Thank you. Thank you very much for your Q and A questions. Thank you okay. so much for the now, question. Yes. I think it's finished uh, for this. Uh, now we have the last three teams. Okay, the team number nine, the Galactic Jump Management from Singapore, Miss Julia, please welcome for the pitch presentation. Okay, you may share the screen and test your voice. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So if you're ready, you can start and the clock will be counting down. Okay. Um, I can't see the timer. Okay, can, can you see it, it now? No. Hello, can you see the no. timer now? No. Okay. Um, let let let, let uh, technical fix just a moment. Okay. The clock is actually one of the cell which says a timekeeper. So if you make the slide showing a little smaller, maybe you'll start seeing it. Is that visible? Um, when I do the gallery thing. It's just the timekeeper is a blank screen. And it doesn't do the countdown? Yeah, but it's all right. I can set my okay. own timer. Okay. Right. Thank you. So right. whenever you're ready. OK, I'm ready. OK. Um, Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Julia Santoyan, and I'm the founder of the Galactic Junk Management. Many of us are aware of the exponentially growing problem of the space junk. This is a, this, this is a graph depicting the steady accumulation of rocket debris and defunct mission-related objects floating in space. In correlation, this is a graph of the annual global waste in the United States, evidently ceasing to decline. 
The relationship between the two is alarming. And at this rate, before humans would be able to colonize space, we would be faced with the same proliferating problem issue we face on Earth in the present. Just as there are landfills to process waste, space also needs a junk disposal system. We can't stop launching rockets and we can't stop sending satellites to space. We know that we need to continue doing this to progress and, and benefit civilization. But did more launches, there's the inevitability of the resultant space junk. With the Earth struggling to combat the wastage problem, we should address it before facing similar, similar consequences in the future. While supporting the necessary strides for space exploration, the Galactic Junk Management aims to be the main spacewide junk disposal system around Earth and eventually beyond for a more sustainable future. The Galactic Junk Management features a space junk disposal system that is made up of a retrieval and disposal system. Each drone-like satellite, one that encompasses characteristics of a drone to effectively maneuver itself to and from the disposal system, station is released from the deployer attached to the space station. It utilizes space junk tracking technology to locate adrift parts of spacecraft and other related orbital debris. Upon identification of a certain junk, the satellite will launch a thudder that contains a harpoon to pierce through that part of the junk. When the debris is successfully attached to the harpoon, the satellite will wind the junk closer to itself for safer transportation. The satellite will be programmed to bring the junk back through the shortest route. Once the junk arrives at the entryway of the disposal system, the satellite will release the junk inside the station so the disposal process can take place. This disposal system is an enclosed chamber that contains plasma vaporization technology to convert space junk to usable energy. A conveyor-like path will bring the junk further into the station to undergo the process of waste to energy conversion. The energy resulting from the junk will be used to power the station for future uses. The satellite used, using, used during the retrieval system will be reused to pursue more missions and recharged with the energy obtained from the plasma vaporization of space junk from previous conversions. The Galactic Junk Management aims to pursue government contracts in a similar sense as SpaceX to NASA. In addition, to, in addition, our projected customers include private aerospace companies who need cleanup for rocket debris after field launches. After I mentioned, the prospectus for our innovation is to be the main spacewide junk disposal system. Designating stations around Earth and beyond to utilize waste to energy technology and creating a more sustainable future. Looking into currently proposed solutions for the removal of space debris from low Earth orbit, it can be concluded that most of them, if not all, end up with burning up junk in the Earth's atmosphere, which is detrimental to the planet's ozone layer affecting us directly. Alongside this, satellites being used in such proposed solutions in such proposed solutions are programmed to self-destruct and or burn up in the atmosphere, not only negatively impacting the environment, but wasting resources by the technology that is non-reusable. This is what differentiates galactic junk management from other disposal systems because we design our technology to feed off the energy from the space junk itself, in addition to sustainably avoiding to damage the Earth's atmosphere. When humans start exploring and settling in space, our innovation understands the cruciality of valuing our resources, thus turning present problems into long-term benefits. Our company's ultimate goal is to deal with space junk and debris in a more environmentally safe and resource-conservative manner, all while taking into consideration the potential strides humanity may make towards space exploration in the future. Our space station is a reusable space junk disposal system, meaning it can act as a composting facility like on Earth, but the junk will be converted into reusable energy for powering up the station, for example, such as providing electricity to space settlements. There are limitless possibilities to what this converted energy can be used for. We can, we can continue to send rockets to space without the worry of space junk accumulating or using methods that detrimentally harm Earth. By choosing reusability and supporting the sustainable use of resources, the galactic junk management is our solution for responsibly combating a problem that can be turned around for our benefit. Thank you.
Hi, thank you for for presentation. It was very impressive for me. So one quick question to you is that what would be the benefit for user to uh, clean up the unnoved environment? Wait, I can I couldn't hear that. Can you repeat it? Okay, so what would be the benefits for your user to clean up the space environment? Our users or customers are as we mentioned, private companies or government under government contracts. So that includes, for example, SpaceX could be one of our users. And when they launch rockets or failed rockets, they leave their space junk circulating around space. So that benefit by enlisting us as 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 enlisting our service to them, we would be they would be able to be provided with not the responsibility of creating the junk around Earth. And also, as I've said, when humans start to settle in space again, and as we know, SpaceX is trying to settle in space also, it won't be a bother to them anymore. And in addition, rocket missions won't also be disrupted from these space companies who put the space junk around Earth to begin with. Okay, understand yourself. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, yes, Laura. Yes, um, again, thank you so much for your presentation. I thought you presented the concepts very, very well. And um, it's such a critical issue for all of us to be able to work together to address this issue. Um, I love the analogy as well with uh, kind of pollution here on Earth and, and space pollution. Um, but one of the things, um, how are you tracking right now in your journey uh, from an idea into a more commercial reality? Um, do you have any partnerships? Do you have any prototypes? And maybe just help the, us to understand that and what your next steps are. Uh, thank you for your question. So like one of the participants here a while ago, they said, I enter, we also entered this contest um, mainly in ID, ideation first and researching the prototype. So right now we're, we're brainstorming concepts and your other, con your other question was commercial, commercialization, right? Yes. Yes. And partnerships. Yeah. Yeah, so what we project in the future is to, in terms of commercialization, is to partner with governments and private space companies so that it's like, it's like each country has a disposal system. So we would, we would lease our services in space to clean up, to clean up the junk that the government or a private space company was responsible for. Great, thank you so much. And best wishes. Hello, um, thank you for your presentation. I want to understand a little bit more about your technical approach. What exactly is your technical approach? Right. So there are two um, parts to my idea. It's the retrieval system and the disposal system. Which one are you interested in? Can you explain a little bit more about that? Okay, so for the retrieval system, we have the main, con the main concepts in this system is the satellite, the theater, and the harpoon. As I've explained, the satellite, we utilize, we utilize pre-existing space junk tracking softwares um, to track the junk. And in the satellite, there is a feather and a harpoon, which will be used to attach itself to the junk. And that satellite is responsible for bringing it, for bringing it to the disposal system. When it gets to this, when it gets to the disposal system, the satellite will release the junk, which is connected to the tether. And in the disposal system, the 
junk will go further and, and plasma vapor, the main concept of our idea is plasma vaporization of metals, which is one of the primary materials of space junk. And so inside the disposal system, plasma vaporization will occur and be converted into energy, which will then, which can then be reused to power the satellites and and or the machine the machinery itself okay uh so harpoon system has been already appro approved by european company already but uh, for vaporization systems you're going to need a huge systems and also a yeah. uh, uh, big uh, uh, um, large uh, power consumption yes so That's something to yeah. to achieve for you yeah um so we were the we realized that energy input should be bigger than the energy output of course so just as the iss for example was brought up to space and how it works now we we are prospectively going to use solar panels because and position ourselves in a location that maximizes the energy of the sun to power the machine first or but it's either solar power or use of batteries, but in, that's, that will be temporarily, temporary or for emergency uses only because in the long run, the machine will begin to power itself. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation and Q&A. Okay, so next I would like to invite the 10th team Intelligent Wi-Fi Preventive System for Malaysia by Mr. Mohat. Hello, uh, good afternoon. Uh, can you hear my voice? Yes, I can hear your voice. Okay, so I want to uh, share my uh slides eh? okay eh? yes please okay so can you see my slides yes you can and... start and the timer will be copying yeah can you can you make it in the slide presentation format yes yes, yes. okay 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 Minasan Konnichiwa. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I am Muhammad Zamzuri. We'll present our project, Intelligent Will Fire Preventive System. Why Intelligent Will Fire Preventive System? Forests will fire normally contribute to very thick haze to Asian countries every year. Thick haze cause effect to humans such as severe acute disease and even lung cancer. It also contributes to economic loss more than 100 million every year in terms of medical, travel, and many more. It also affects the nature, destroy animal habitat, and release 1.76 billion tons of carbon globally in 2021. So it will increase every year. So forest will fire control using a conventional approach normally depends on human observation and report to authority. It is time lagging and will fire will spread faster and resident evacuation takes time. So by using our approach, intelligent device once detect abnormality using sensors will send signal to satellite and then signal to control room before troop of firefighters start moving to remove and eliminate small areas of will fire and abnormalities in the forest. The intelligence system also send SMS to nearby residents to evacuate faster. Our, our business model for the system is business to business and business to government. Okay, so our profit per setup is 1 million yen per 10 devices because the cost per device is uh, 50,000 yen, but uh, we sell the price uh, 150,000 yen, and then every device, at least we need to locate 10 device per location. And then the device is randomly installed at three at height of two meters from the root. And the distance for each device is 200 to 700 meters each. 
Okay, so if uh, we get at least, uh, we install at least 10, 100 places, we can acquire about 100 million yen gross profit uh, per selling per, per sale. Okay, so thank you very much for from my presentations. Are you finished the presentation? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, okay. I finished my presentation and special thanks to uh, S Booster Executive Committee and S Booster Mentor and also the big thanks to sponsors. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's move to the Q&A question. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I have a couple of questions. But the first, how the IoT devices use transmit the data and the fire detection data? To the um, yeah, pardon, the, pardon me, uh, I cannot hear the voice. Hear the uh, voice. Uh, sorry, really? Okay, <laughs> how about this? Could you hear okay, me? Okay. Yes, yes. I see, okay. Uh, yeah, anyway, then my question would be, let's say, how uh, do you transfer or transmit the data from IoT devices of detecting the fire, forest fire, to the uh, warning center or whatever? And uh, second would be, uh, would you kindly explain a little bit more about how you are going to use the satellite, for example, data? Or do, don't you don't use the satellite at all? Okay. Thank you very much for the questions. Okay. So in terms of the data that uh, we require, we use the as presence from the Sony, send the signal to the satellites, and then the data mm -hmm. from the satellite will be acquired in the control center. So the control mm -hmm. center uh, normally uh, will get the information uh, less than 30 minutes. So the equation, uh, uh, the uh, firefighter troops will be tending to the uh, exact and accurate pace uh, faster instead of uh, using uh, observation from the normal people. So by using the satellite, uh, we use uh, either uh, GNS, GNSS data, and, and also the uh, GPS to locate the locations. Uh, and then we use the LoRaWAN to uh, make sure the system can be uh, stand alone. And then uh, we use all uh, the Sony uh, wait, uh, okay. okay we use the Sony battery to power up the uh, S presence and then uh, the system or the system can withstand about 500 hours, which is about 21 days for each uh, devices. So, before we change to another uh, power, okay? So we assume 30% before running flat, it, uh, we need to change batteries for every 14 days. I see. Okay, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm Manab Kimura from Sony Corporation, Sony Group Corporation. Uh, I have one comment at the past. Uh, uh, Lily, thank you. Uh, maybe you have so our uh, pre press release regarding uh, uh, air press transmission POC. And uh, yeah, uh, presence is just uh, uh, actually a powerful device and uh, our LPW address can communicate uh, over very long distances. And uh, as you said, uh, it goes from the ground to the uh, uh, aerial satellite. And uh, uh, I'd like to know the, uh, what is your strong point 
uh, utilizing such a technologies uh, from Sony. So uh, differentiation point might be uh, required to proceed the business. So I'd like to know such a thing. Yeah, thank you. Uh, may I, I get, uh, thank you for your uh, question, but uh, may I get again the questions, the last questions? <laughs> the strength, the strength of the our technologies or what? Yeah, yeah, strong point of you. Uh, I'd okay. like to know. Yeah. Okay. So, in terms of our technologies compared to the conventional approach, okay. So, by using the intelligent will fire system, preventive system, we use a lot of sensors control connected to the uh, controller board, okay. And then, before this uh, controller board will send the data to the satellite and communicate to each other, and then this uh, satellite will send the data to the control room. So, this control room will send uh, the troops to uh, the place of abnormalities, like such as the pit land, so that it can spray the uh, spray the uh, water or spray uh, bombard the water at the place, so that it can prevent the uh, the wildfire instead of uh, it start to fire, and then it will spread faster because uh, with uh, because of the no observation at all. So by using this uh, system. Uh, we can eliminate or prevent the fire to uh, explode or to uh, start instead of we start the, the fire start and then we send the troop. So this is the our strength compared to the uh, other products. Uh, I'm answering any of your questions. Uh, thank you for your answer. And uh, uh, sorry again, uh, I'd like to know your uh, unique idea uh regarding uh, uh such a uh, uh, utilization of the technologies yeah okay if you if there is uh, i right now yeah okay uh our unique ideas okay normally in the in the what we call it in the malaysia in the indonesia okay the pit land or uh the uh, pit uh, pit land okay we don't know what is the temperature okay if there is a uh, the, the temperature at the land also we don't know we also don't know about the dryness of the systems okay so by using the device by using the systems okay we can uh, use all the sensors to detect uh, the what we call it the temperature we can uh, detect the uh, how what is the speed of the uh, wind so that uh, we know uh, how to uh, remove the how how is the possibility of the systems uh, can what we call it can uh, the will fire can spread or faster or smaller and then we also use the camera uh, sony's cameras uh, to detect the leaf the level of dryness okay using the ai technologies and then also using the carbon monoxide sensors and then carbon dioxide sensors and organic solvent sensors so this organic solvent sensors normally uh, will detect uh if there is a problem it will just uh, will know how uh, the will fire will occur or not so it will send the data to the sony s presence controller bot before this this controller bot sent to the satellite so this is our strength which is using all the sensors and camera and also to analyze the dryness and then analyze the level of wind then analyze the level of temperature at, at, at each uh, uh, device uh, we attach. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for your answer. And uh, yeah, uh, I have uh, one more comment for you. Uh, LPWA uh, is usually uh, is not suitable for the sending a large amount of data. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I think it's better to have a, a method to um, uh, so, uh, uh, reduce the size of the transmission data uh, via LPWA to the uh, area of satellite. Yeah, such kind of the uh, technology uh, can be uh, uh, your strengths, I think. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you for your suggestion. So I hope that uh, if uh, I'm given the opportunities in this project to further more to further this project, uh, we can. Uh, <laughs>
and then uh, get your what we call it uh, get your adv uh, advice on this matter thank you thank you very much now let's move to the final team hello the team ocean ice from indonesia yeah. Yeah, this is Ocean Ice team. Can you okay. hear my voice? Yes, I can hear. Okay, let me share my script. Okay. Uh, let me make it full. Um, yes. Yeah, I can see the timer. Yes. Uh, I'm ready. All right. Okay. Thank you for the chance. Good afternoon, the Honorable Board of Jury and everyone. Indonesia is one of the biggest archipelago countries, of which its two third area is covered by the ocean. There are more than two million uh, citizens uh, utilizing this condition uh, by becoming fishermen. They catch fishes not only for their daily need, but for, to be traded and raising money from that. Among the fishermen, Small-scale fishermen are dominating by the number. The, the small fishermen go fishing by using small boats. They're also equipped by simple and traditional tools to catch fish. According to Indonesia Marine and Fishery Ministry data, small-scale fishermen has a big contribution, but it can potentially produce turnover about uh, 64 billion rupiah. However, there is an advantage and a potential threat that is caused by small scale fish fishermen fishing activities. Because the small scale fishermen using traditional fish, uh, fishing method, they are not able to determine fishing spot effectively because they have no information where the fish population is. As the consequence, they usually spend more fuel when doing their, their work. It may decrease their net income and affect their prosperity. Moreover, the small scale fishermen also potentially exploit the ocean resource vastly. They tend to do that because it's hard to find the best fishing spot. So when they found it, they will exploit it without taking any consideration to the number of the fish population on that location. It can cause overfishing, which will harm the ecosystem and will affect the number of catch in the future. This problem has become concern of Indonesian Marine and Fishery Ministry. In this occasion, I'm Edward and my partner Galuh Martiansha are presenting an idea to overcome that problem, which name Ocean Eyes. Ocean Eyes will be uh, the artificial eye for the ocean that will see the underwater resource availability and report it to the human on land. It will be the bridge for the human to understand the recent situation under the sea and make plan to deal with it uh, according to what Ocean told them. Ocean ice is a swarm system consists of smart boy as ice. In the smart boy, there's small and low power uh, multi micro control which control ultrasonic sensors. The sensor will detect fish population at radius uh, up to 100 meter and it has up to uh, 100 meter of fish detection depth. It also has a uh, smart propeller which can make the boy moving to some certain location uh, according to authority plan. It's equipped by batteries and solar panels to supply power for its operation. And it has a direct satellite communication module to transmit and receive data uh, to and from the host. This will enable real-time monitoring function. Uh, in, and this, uh, this module is reconfigurable and we can add more sensor to, to, to add its uh, uh, function. This is the block system of ocean ice boy, which is working on swarm formation. So it will be the feeder to generate fishing and fish preservation map. In this map, the fish population level and status will be shown like this figure. By implementing the ocean ice, small scale fishermen will get access to the fishing map. It will help them to plan their fishing activity effectively and hopefully it will have reducing the operational capex and it will increase the fishermen prosperity. Furthermore, it will inform the which location that is and is not allowed to fish and hopefully it will help the authority to monitor the activities. 
and maintain the fish population from overfishing. At the end, it's, it's expected uh, that ocean ice can help the authority to manage the fish catch as, uh, and distribution as efficient as it should be, and it will avoid water increases in the future for uh, Indonesian citizens. That is all from us, uh, ocean ice, the bridge of the human, uh, the ocean and the human. Thank you. That's all from uh, our team. Okay, uh, Miss Laura, uh, if you have oh, any yes. thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yes, again, thank you so much and such an important issue to address without question. Um, I think my, my uh, question relates to, again, where you are on your journey. Uh, have you done any prototyping? Um, have you, um, you know, and if so, where are you at? And the second thing is how will you engage the fishermen? How will you find a way to draw them to your platform? And I'm reflecting on uh, an amazing entrepreneur out of Indonesia named um, Helianti Hillman from Jabara. And uh, she has 50,000 farmers, you know, on her mobile platform. And so there were some innovative things that were done there. So I just wanted to submit that for your consideration too. Okay, thank you. For the first question regarding the prototyping, uh, currently this is the idea before we have done the prototype several years ago uh, with my uh, my team and my students but uh, but currently uh, the, the the project is slowing down due to the pandemic so uh, because everything is going back to normal uh, we are starting uh, this uh, idea again and hopefully for, from this s booster we can realize uh, this idea and for the second question uh, regarding how to persuade the fishermen to use this uh, 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 solution, uh, our uh, 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 we 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 don't make move to the fishermen uh, directly, but uh, this solution is uh, for uh, we targeted uh, for uh, the fishermen cooperation because uh, almost every fisherman in Indonesia are under a uh, fisherman uh, cooperation organization. And uh, usually our uh, government gives some a grant or subsidy for the uh, local and small scale fishermen through this organization. So this application target is that organization so they can uh, have a value added thing uh, that can be a benefit for the fishermen uh, on their uh, area. And for the suggestion, uh, thank you very much. Uh, we will uh, consider cons consider it as uh, to 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 make uh, this solution more uh, impactful. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hi, uh, thanks for your presentation. Um, I have a, a one quest question for you. Uh, you said that uh, your sensor can cover up to 100 meters. Uh, is, yes. it, is it correct? That, that means uh, you're gonna have to need a lot, a lot of uh, sensors. Uh, and it, is it possible to yeah. make this 100 meter better? Yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, in this uh, prototype, we currently we are using the cheapest uh, ultrasonic sensor where uh, from its data set, it can uh, detect up to 100 meters. Actually, there are a lot of uh, better sensors and I believe it can be integrated to our system. Okay, 
to maybe uh, you might be able to get some support from uh, uh, sponsors, uh, which makes us uh, sensors uh, uh, yeah. in the future. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello, is there any other questions from the judges or sponsor? So if there is no, I would like to thank you all again for your wonderful pitch presentations. So let me briefly inform you again what's going to happen in like uh, 30 minutes from now. So everyone who's done the pitch presentation will be waiting for the final evaluation. Of course, our judge and sponsor will working hard to determine the winners and the selected finalists. Of course, in the meantime, we going to give you some of the panel talk on the space economy and the opportunity for the space startups in Thailand and global. Can you share the screen? Hello. Okay. So in the next 30 minutes, why the uh, judges and sponsor determine the selected finalists. We're gonna give the panel talk for each speakers. I think each speaker are ready to give you a interesting topics. We will start one by one, starting from Dr. Natawat Hong Kanjanakun, Director of Technology Development KISDA and then followed by Ms. Rocha Rachawong Kulpasert from the Thailand Board of Investment, who are gonna give you the opportunity for investment in Thailand about the space industry. And then the third one is Mr. Landon Camps. He was the winner from last year, as booster that gained the Asia Oceania Prize. And then after this ends, you will face the, uh, the moment of the announce of the uh, final pitch presentation. So without further ado, I would like to invite Dr. Natawat Hong Kanjanakun to give the uh, presentation of the space economy and space technology in Thailand. Please welcome. Just a moment. Okay. Okay. Can you see the screen? Okay. okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Natawat Hongkanjanakun, Director of Space Technology Development Office from Chisla. So I will uh, give you a brief talk on space economy and development of space technology in Thailand. Okay. What is this, this picture? So I think you might guess about this picture. In fact, this is the salmon. And what does salmon mean here in the space economy development of Thailand? So it means that 
uh, in Thailand, the development of space we developed from downstream to upstream, like the salmon that swim from from downstream to upstream here. Uh, I think you might uh, familiar with this picture about the space application value chain uh, that might start from the space size. Then we have the uh, satellite design manufacturing. Then we put the satellite to the launch operator. And uh, one, once the satellite is uh, in the orbit, we can communicate with the satellite with the ground segment. And then we use the data from, from satellite from, uh, from space, which is the uh, satellite application and service. So you can see the variation from upstream to downstream. But like I mentioned, the development of uh, Thai space economy, we developed from downstream to upstream. So uh, we start with the space application and service, which is the number five here or the downstream one. You can see that the space application in Thailand, uh, even startups or the, the company in Thailand, we can have many uh, applications that we can, can uh, explore. For example, mapping, water management, natural resources, and, and environment, agriculture, urban and society, or disaster. I think uh, many startups today, we uh, we put the problem from 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 this topic, and I I see that many opportunity we can explore from from here. The next one uh, that we highlight a lot, and and we think there are many many uh, application and opportunity as well is uh, the location based service of the uh, navigation satellite, which is uh, for example from from the. Uh, land like the autonomous vehicle or sea maritime or the airspace which is the the application that that we can uh, make thing benefits from space as well so uh many application can happen in thailand and, and i think this can also do in 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 asia region too about the ground segment uh, the example that I can give you is the the uh, investment from European country that do investment in 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 Thailand already. And uh, as this are we are the the government agency, we also have many development uh, like you can see in the left hand side, many application, many uh, uh, software development can be built from the ground segment service. Uh, we skip number three because in in Thailand the service as the launch operator like spaceport or launch vehicle is not yet established. But uh, in the future, I think we may see this activity very soon. So I skip to number two, which is the satellite design manufacturing. Uh, today in Thailand, uh, many satellites uh, have been built like. Uh, the example that I show you here is uh, our satellite in Tisda. We can call that uh, is our uh, operational satellite. That that is the first one we built in, in Thailand, and we also built the facility and standard. Many people can extend in Thailand, so uh, I think that the facility and support from from uh, Thai government can be met here and can support. It's not only Thai Thai startups or Thai company. I think this facility can support for the startup or many uh, company all over Asia. So it's, it's quite ready with the standard and the technical support team. Then uh, the supply chain here in Thailand is also built uh, like uh, the satellite that, that, that I showed you just now, TOS 2A, we have the company that involved in the project and if you can see the number of the percentage of the satellite is about 23 percent by weight that be built by Thai supplier and and I think this is the idea that we can extend to the the company and start up in in the Asia country as well yeah this is I, I mentioned and we we have the ready for support and testing service today so the first one that which is kind of the, the upstream one. This is about the space size, uh, can be the, the, the frontier research. For example, 
the example of the research uh, of space experiment like food or plantation bacteria liquid crystal uh, this business can can be start from from uh, your team your your idea and then can be explored in the future so this is a very good opportunity in the future as well and like the space science uh, other topic like the space flight uh, space traffic management, space debris can be the thing that that uh, startup or a company uh, can can bring the idea. I think this one is kind of the the five uh, example, the big example that can build the whole ecosystem in in Thailand that we would like to partner with any country, with any company or any startup that can can join to Tista and Thailand. So. Uh, but the thing, the big thing in, in Thailand today is we don't have yet the space law or space regulation yet. So uh, the one that can unlock everything is the Space Act. So today we developed the new Space Act of Thailand. So, but the final goal is to develop space economy in Thailand that I mentioned before. And our activity will be explored later, like a space research, space exploration, space tourism, or even space port. And the uh, benefit, like the investment exploration or the income employment will be built from, from the technology that we are uh, building today. And at, at final, we would like to evaluate in uh, Thai space industry and space economy, which is our final goal. So uh, here is the quick picture, quick view of the space economy in Thailand. And the next presentation, you will uh, listen to what can be the benefit if you do some investment or activity in Thailand from the board of investment in Thailand from uh, Ms. Salosha. So uh, thank you so much. If you have a further question, any question, you can can uh, contact me through uh, this contact below here. Thank you. Okay. I hope everyone. Okay, I hope everyone is hearing me. Okay. Thank you, Miss Rocha. Thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you, uh, Jista and the co-host for uh, having me today. I am greeting from the Board of Investment Office in Bangkok, Thailand. I am Sarosha Rachawong Bun Prasad, Senior Investment Promotion Analyst from the Division 2. So 10 minutes from now on will be the highlight of the investment promotion and the privileges for this space activity if you're doing it in Thailand. So let me share the screen. Uh, just a moment. Okay. Yes, I can Who's see that? the Who's screen. Okay, okay. Yeah. okay. First of all, without further ado, uh, let's begin with the brief information about who we are. BOI or the Board of Investment Thailand is the government agency under the office of the Prime Minister. We provide incentives and privileges to the eligible investment both domestically and overseas. Our incentives are both PAC and non PAC incentives. So let me give you the example the corporate income tax exemption or the tax holiday from three to eight years categorized based on uh, investment activity and the import duty on machinery and raw material exemption. For non-tax incentives uh, such as exemption from rules restricting on foreign ownership of land, for example. And we also give the facilitation on visa and work permit as well. So uh, let's look at the latest policy 
these are 12 targeted industry that Thailand wants to achieve according to the 20 years national plan. And you may see that the aviation and logistic is among of the new S curve. And at the BOI, the manufacturing of devices and equipment for space are under the aviation category. And at the division two, our main responsibility are advanced manufacturing industry, such as automotive, smart electronic and electrical appliance or ENE, automation and robotics, and as, as well as the aviation. Um, this is the current value of Thailand uh, aerospace project at the moment. Actually, BOI has promoted the satellite communication services for more than 30 years ago. But back then, we consider it was one of the infrastructure activity. And as the days go by, as the user, we see the linkage between the aviation and aerospace industry. And as the time, our uh, man, uh, manufacturing industry is growing, we see the linkage between uh, the automotive, electrical, uh, I mean E and E and the aviation. So, uh, in twin, uh, in two thousand sixteen, the activity of manufacturing on devices and operating system has been implemented. As you may see, these are the activity that related to the space industry that we are currently giving the investment support. Uh, because we wanted to shift our status from the user to the manufacturer and the, uh, the space related business uh, become, became popular just recent years. I, 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 I should say it like two or three years ago that we got the investor interested and come to us for these two activity. The value in the table here seems very small amount when comparing to other industry that we are currently promoting. However, these projects are Thai investor majority and, and we see it as a great start. And this slide, okay. And this slide can, uh, uh, can be the main focus on our further uh, investment support in the near future because actually we are currently revising our investment promotion strategy and we see the growing trend of the space economy and the possibility that Thailand would be the great location for the space launching site and we aim to break down the sub activity into more specific one. So let's see, let's take a quick look at our incentive. You could see that the aerospace activity we offer to you uh, belong to the A1 group. Well, an A1 is the prime privilege that we offer both activity, whether you are the manufacturer or you are making the operating system. And any kind of activity would of uh, any kind of the A1 group would receive the eight years of tax holidays with the uh, exemption of the import duty, both for machinery and the raw material. And what does each group of the uh, incentive mean? Uh, let me show you here. The amount and type of the privileges depend on the business activity and the location that you are doing your project in Thailand. An A-class incentive means that the activity is valuable to the industry value chain 
and that the DOI wants to nurture them by granting our privileges in order that these, those, sorry, uh, we give the privilege more, the most of privilege to, to those A1 groups because we see that those promoted projects will finally stimulate the relevant industry. But not all kind of activity are eligible to receive BOI privilege. And you can see that the privilege of the A, the A group has four of them, A1 to A4, and the, the year of the exemption of tech holiday is gradually from each of, of from each group. Not like I say, not all kind of activity are eligible to receive BOI privilege. In this slide, we have the B class group, these will not, this group will not uh, receive the tech holidays. We only provide this basic package, but additionally, if any project contain intense research and development, like you guys here today, uh, all, 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 all of you, I believe you are the startup and you, you have done uh, very intense research and development in your project. Uh, it will benefit you in another way that it would grant more merit year of I of of I sorry. It would grant you more incentive year of the tax holiday to ten years or thirteen years maximum. And, and at the moment we have the measure, the, sp the spatial measure to the startup as well. And this is my final slide here. If you have any inquiry, please feel free to contact me and contact my uh, colleague in, Okay, in the overseas office, we have 16 offices throughout the world. And I believe my colleague will be happy, more than happy to help. Thank again, Ms. Rocha. Uh, is there any other questions from the uh, participants? I think there's some. Okay, there's I'll some. Stop. Uh, stop. Ah. Okay, I'll stop. 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 I'll uh, pitch presentation from Asia and Oceania regions, right? And after they grant the final list, they will face like an angel investor and, and like an investment company from Japan. So in terms like if they get some kind of budget or investment from this, from, from the angel investment, they can also apply the incentive also in Taiwan, right? I think there's some uh, has been acting like this, yeah. Like other countries, it's not like that. Did you hear me? Okay, sorry. I, I didn't uh, turn on the microphone, sorry. I, I understand the question, but in the... I I will show you the slide. Can you show it, right? The condition that you... I, I believe that you, you got the rest, rest fund from the VC or the CVC as a startup to develop your project. I'm, I am, am I correct? Yes, yes. Ha. yes. Uh, okay, we got the condition here that if you got the rest fund or any support, it shouldn't be more than 
five million baht in total. If you if you want to get the uh BOI competitive uh the the BOI promotion for the startup, but if it's more than five million baht, um, I I think you can just got the normal investment just our our normal one just that i think it would be okay because boi we we give the incentive for the both thai and foreigner that that is not the problem no matter how uh, no matter what nationality you are if you are doing the investment in Thailand that, and it is value enough, we can grant you the incentive. Okay, my cat. Thank you, sir. I see the chat box that there's some uh, startup have received the uh, mails from the NATO and they start program I am I will receive the information and maybe we can further look into it thank you okay thank you so much and you can reach us at any Royal Thai Embassy at the location I show you Japan USA or in the in Europe we have more than 16 offices throughout the world so just contact us and we more than happy to help Thank you very much again. So let's move to the next uh, panelist. Actually, the winners from last year on the Asia Oceania Prize. I would like to welcome Mr. Landon Camps to give the uh, Presentation of like uh, what kind of ideas from last year that you gained your the price. Yes. Ah, I can feel you. Hi. Hello. <laughs> can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. So uh yeah, uh is it okay if I uh share some uh presentation slides? Okay, I, I think you can hear me. So I'll share my slides and uh, I have a very different uh, message than the, the previous uh, presenter. But anyways, I hope you find uh, it useful. Are you seeing the, um, can you see my uh, presentation slide full screen? Yes, sir. Okay, okay, thank you, sorry. Okay, so sorry about the delay. Uh, my name is Landon and I'm from Leitara. In Leitara, uh, as I was just introduced, uh, presented at the uh, Esprusu 2021 last year, uh, where we fortunately, we got the Asia Oceania Prize. And our proposal title was this year, uh, Hybrid Kick Motors for Improving Small Satellite Mobility. Uh, so I'll just make a brief uh, self-introduction. So I'm, like I said, Landon, and uh, my life, my adult life is in these three sections. Uh, first, I was an officer in the US Army. And so you see a picture of me on patrol here in 2011. And that was actually uh, an experience which uh, led me to decide to go to graduate school. And I went to graduate school in Hokkaido University in Japan. Uh, and so you see in the middle, it's my picture with my professor uh, getting my PhD. And most recently, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Leitara, which now is a company. And that's a picture from the S Booster 2021 last year. And uh, Leitara is a company founded in Japan. And it's founded between my co-founder Shota Hirai. And uh, you can see a picture on the left and my professor 
uh, Professor Nagata. It's a picture on the, the right in the pictures. And here you see some pictures from our development at the university. Leitaro is a Hokkaido University startup. So we started the technology at the university and commercialized it um, at the company Leitaro. Now, uh, the motivation for, for Leitaro, for me, it begins when I was in Afghanistan. And here, uh, we, I was in a place with no infrastructure. And yet, uh, the US Army had a lot of technologies related to satellites. And I felt that uh, not, just Af not just the US Army, but the Afghanistan people would benefit greatly from the satellite technology. And uh, that, dis that triggered my entrance back into graduate school, which is why I came to Japan. And since then, um, the satellite technology was developed by many companies around the world. And we heard from some just now. And so actually, at LATAR, we don't, we don't need to make these satellites. So fortunately, many of you are making these satellites. Uh, so thank you for making these satellites. But with all of these satellites come some other problem, which we tried to address at LATAR. And that's the problem of uh, mobility. So uh, these small satellites are going into space together on rideshare launches. And as a result, there's a few problems building up. One is the, it takes a lot of time to get to your desired orbit. Another is uh, space debris is building up. And for the space agencies, uh, is, there's still not so many opportunities to go beyond the earth into deep space or to the moon or through the radiation belts. Okay, so we're, at late hour, we're trying to solve this problem of mobility. And the technology issue is uh, right now, there's only two types of propulsion systems. One which uses the chemical propulsion, which is hazardous, and one which uses the electric propulsion, which is very, very slow and requires a lot of electrical power. So our proposal was to use a fuel, which is made of plastic. Uh, and so uh, by using plastic as a fuel, we can have a propulsion system that's fast and safe and affordable. This is the presentation we made to, to S. Booster. And so lastly, I just, uh, I want to make a comment about the participation in S Booster. So uh, on the bottom here is a timeline. In the fall of 2021, so this is last year, we joined the S Booster uh, event, like you guys, and we had these mentors. And these, men these mentors helped us prepare uh, to uh, get some prizes, including the S Booster Asia Oceania Prize and the MIT. Uh, technology review prize. And so from this point, uh, thanks to S Booster, we are able to join some incubators. And thanks to these incubators, uh, we're able to get some grants. And so now uh, we're moving from a grant program into uh, venture capital funding. So uh, for us, the S Booster was the beginning of uh, a very nice uh, year of education and then funding by the by the Japanese government. So uh, I think you also can uh, take advantage of the S booster and um, use it to get into some incubation program and maybe some grant program, which will lead you to venture capital uh, as well. So uh, that's all I have to present. I think uh, the rest of the time is for questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much again, Mr. Landon. Of course, as you are one of the like uh, finalists from this Asia round, you're guaranteed to win the prize, right? Of course, the important is after that and along the way, how to like uh, in the brief or quick uh, guideline, how to like uh, if you can give the instruction or advisor for this like uh, upcoming of like a uh, of course, you're gonna announce the winner for finalists today. What oh. kind of yeah, expect for like uh once they win the program, they go to the mentor accelerator program and they win the prize, right? And up, what what kind of the keys to success along the way? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I of course I think you all know uh you gain what you put in. So you have to do the work. There's no, 
there's no way other than doing doing some hard work but uh, i want looking back i feel the something i want your mindset the mindset you should have is your mentors are the most valuable resource uh, from s booster so the s booster mentors are experts in space and these people are very it's very hard to find the time to meet these people and so uh, please uh, take advantage of your mentors ask them for their time take advantage of their of their time because after s booster it's not so easy to find time it's not so easy to get the space experienced people to give you their time <laughs> especially not for free so while you can get the time for free please uh, take advantage of the time from your mentors and ask them to meet with you and give you advice and cherish cherish their time wow thank you very much that is an excellent uh, suggestion i see that after you as booster you are still working on in the space uh follow up with the uh, some of the uh of the uh, expert right oh I yes think. yeah so yes. I think when you lose your mentors, you realize just how important they are. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, you, have yes, to, of course. <laughs> you have to find them again. You know, so in our case, we uh, we we joined some other programs to help uh, mentor us. Yeah. Thank you very much. So, thank you all for the wonderful panelists for today. So let's stay with us for if you have time to witness the uh, announce of the. Uh, of the uh, final list for this year and of course i think i'm checking the time for the final evaluation it seems there's still some going on discussion so i really would like you to stay around and stick around uh, in the meantime we would like to play the uh, promotion video from the uh, s booster sponsor until of course it's very soon so please stay with, and we will uh, witness the uh, announcement together so see you in the minute and enjoy your uh, promotion video from the sponsor Okay. Okay. Welcome back, uh, everyone. Thank you very much for your waiting. Now it is time for the announcement. So let me first starting by announcement of the special Tisda Award, one award for the special team that maybe have the potential 
to work with this data collaboration project in the future. And then after this, I would like to invite Professor Shibasaki to introduce the final list. All the final list will be introduced to try to the final round. So special Vista award could be one of the finalists or could be not one of the finalists, it depends. But I would say that all the team today has done the great work. All of you are amazing and has been the winner by yourself. So even if you don't win the uh, prize or selected finalist, you still got the network for future collaboration. And please don't give up for the starting your space business in the future. So all of you would be the winner and should win more than the prize. So without further ado, I would like to announce the special GISDA award. And congratulations to the team, DeFi from AIT. We will won the prize of the 20,000 Thai baht from GISDA. Uh, I will give you the contact information later and congratulations again to winning this prize. So I would like to invite the team DeFi to say something in this occasion, please. So uh, it's very grateful to, to receive this award. So actually, uh, this is a great partner since, since we uh, start. So hope we had collaboration to, to make the, the crop burning uh, reduction in Thailand and also Southeast Asia. So uh, thank you so much to, to give this award to us as our uh, honor. So thank you. Thank you very much. And please stay with us. We are going to take the uh, photo later. Okay, next, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Sorry, Professor Shibasaki, one of the just who give the uh, finalist announcement. So please welcome. Okay, yeah. Thank you very much for introducing uh, me, uh, Shibasaki from University of Tokyo. Actually, the, I'm supposed to uh, provide a kind of summary of the discussions we had as a kind of reviewing reviewers committee. And uh, again, uh, my deep apology for keep you waiting for long, but uh, anyway, uh, it reflects uh, our very difficult decision. And uh, because uh, all the presentations are really uh, interesting and also excellent. So anyway, uh, it took a little bit more longer time uh, to arrive at the final decision. But anyway, I'm, I'm very glad to make a kind of final announcement of the finalists. Okay, so then at the first uh, nominee or the first the finalist would be team five, Defier. Again, it's a kind of repetition, but uh, anyway, congratulations. So then if, if you have any additional words. <laughs> oh, wow. So <laughs> we, we don't expect that. Uh, Wow. So, so we will do our best to to done our purpose with uh cabinet office and JAXA. So, and our partner. So, looking forward to working with you all. So, yeah. Thank you very much again. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, the congratulations. Thank you. Okay. So then, shall we move to the next uh one of the finalists? Would be yes. Uh, fifty two, lead carbon. So then, uh, could we have your words? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm really, very glad to uh, hear that we are finalists. And actually, I attended last year, last not two years back, um, S Booster round in, in um, uh, Thailand, as well as a participant. And today I'm finalist. I'm really so happy about it. Um, with our technology, with I mean, so our technology, we wanted to like, you know, scale up to like a whole South Southeast Asia and behind. So with our mentor support and the S booster support, we're able to like, you know, make it successful. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Congratulations. 
Okay, so then uh, we will invite the next uh, awardee, uh, Team 67. It's a little bit long title. Integrated Groundwater Detection, Tracking, Prediction, Forecast, Estimation, and Remediation by Noble Non-Invasive Techniques for Irrigation Management. Thank okay. you, thank you, thank you. Could we have any words? Uh, we are very happy to be part of the uh, final code. We thank our mentors and uh, our people and colleagues to help us uh, move ahead in life. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Okay, so then the shall we move to the next? Okay, uh, team 122, the NERFS, Navigation of Early Rescue Flood System for Network Transportation. So then, could, could we have any words from the team? Ah, yes, please. I uh, probably you may be muted. <laughs> oh. yeah, yes, uh, thank you so much for the opportunity for us to become the finalists uh, for the S booster. We will do our best. We thank you so much. We are looking okay. forward to the mentor. Yes. Okay, yeah, thank you so much and uh, congratulations. Okay, so uh, next one, unfortunately, this is a rust. So then could we move to the next awardee? OK, the team 167, Ocean Eyes. So then uh, could we have any words from the Ocean Eyes team? Thank you so much. It's our first time in this uh, occasion and look forward for the mentoring and for the final step. Thank you so much. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. And uh, this is the end of the announcement. So probably should the, the, the secretary, will the secretary take this, the microphone? Yeah. Okay, so anyway, this is the final announcement. And uh, yeah, anyway, the, this December, all the finalists are supposed to make a kind of final presentation for the big amount of the award money. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, uh, we are looking forward to hearing or seeing, anyway, uh, your future, anyway, they are, again, the presentations. And uh, we expect that the presentations will be made much even better. Uh, because we you still have uh, anyway the four or five months to for the final any presentations. Yeah, well, anyway, thank you so much. Okay, so anyway, our oh, airlines. Yeah, okay, the the <laughs> secretariat. Would you kindly make a kind of announcement of this, right? Yeah. No, 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 no. no. All right, so I would like to give the stage back to Jista. Thank you very, yes. very much. Thank you again. And congratulations again for all five finalists and Jista Award winners. I would say that uh, after this, before the December event of final round, you are going to give a pile of like a acceleration program and training and yes, you gonna get the chance to meet the mentor and improve your business. Of course, there's still a long way to run. May I ask, it's gonna be on, hopefully, I, I would say hopefully we, we, we can join on site in Tokyo if the, the situation allow us and the situation of the COVID-19 is allow us and, and the Japan regulation is okay, but please stay tuned. <laughs> For the for the announcement, of course we you you are part of the final now. Uh, before we are closing, I would like to thank you again all the judges, all the sponsor, and all the teamwork and hardworking from the uh, secretariat to host this event online. And special thanks to all the uh, finalists to give us the meaning of the S booster. Of course, we can create the space community after this event and so on 
I think that is very important more than the winning or losing. Okay, before we are closing, I would like everyone to open your front video to take a group photo together. All uh, yes. the judges, all the panelists, and all the panelists. So everyone stay in the Zoom, please uh, take all the group photo and Secretariat will capture the screen. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. uh, as with the secretary team, can you allow me to open my camera? <laughs> <laughs> it seems I have been blocked by the host. <laughs> but it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, everyone. Please open your, your camera. Okay, one. So I would say okay. I'd like to give the S Buddha secretary to announce the chart. So please, if you can capture. Yes, wait a, wait a second, please. Sorry. Please turn on your camera, everyone. Also yours. Also what? Okay. Also what? Please turn on your camera. That 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 is the problem. It seems that I need the horse to allow to open. <laughs> but I think I am fine. <laughs> because your yeah, it said you cannot start your video because the host has stopped it. Anyway, it's okay. Don't mind me. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone ready? Should... Okay. Yeah. Everyone smile. Okay, thank you. Okay, and the yeah. second one, smile. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Keep, keep smiling, keep smiling. Maybe it is okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you very, thank much. You very much. Hope uh, you uh, enjoy and thank you again and have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. okay, thank you all. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.